Uh, we'd like to call uh, to order this meeting of the subcommittee of this the meeting trade. is being recorded. Thank you. We'd like to acknowledge uh, and thank our committee chair, Senator Mark Villar, the chair of the Committee on Trade, Commerce and Entrepreneurship for uh, delegating the hearings of uh, six sets of bills uh, to us. Uh, and this is pursuant to rule to section 18 of the rules of the Senate and manifested in the plenary session last February 7. So we'd like to call to order this meeting jointly with the Committees on Economic Affairs, Social Justice, Welfare and Rural Development, Ways and Means, and Finance. Uh, so we'd like to ask our Committee Secretary Sherwin to acknowledge our guests. Thank you for coming, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons for today's subcommittee hearing. From the Department of Trade and Industry, attending uh, physically, we have Director James and Peño, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Ernani Janisio from the Philippine Accreditation Bureau. From the Board of Investment, we have Attorney Ryan Romeo Perez and Mr. Kenneth Royko. From the Anti-Red uh, Tape Authority, we have Mr. John Neil Benedicto. From the Coalition of the Philippine Manufacturers of PPE, we have uh, Ms. Marites Jackson Agoncillo, Ms. Rosette Carillo. From the Commission on Higher Education, we have Dr. Antonio Lopez attending virtually. We also have Mr. Antonio Lopez uh, represented by Ms. April Tobias attending virtually. From the Cooperative Development Authority, uh, Mr. Ray El Vazo attending virtually. From the Department of Agriculture, also attending virtually, we have Mr. Ezreel Manzano. Yes. We also have Mr. Bernard James Tandang. From the Department of Budget and Management, we have uh, Attorney Carlos Borja Jr. attending virtually, and Mr. Joshua Alan Subpatan attending virtually. From the Department of Education, we have uh, Mr. Sa uh, Samuel Sullivan and uh, Attorney Ellen Bueno. From the Department of Finance, attending virtually, we have Director Robert Dominic Mariano, Attorney Aaron Michael Gakutan, and Ms. Sarah Conce. From the Department of Foreign Affairs, Attending virtually, we have Ms. Zoarlin Espiritu. From the Department of Justice, we have Annalisa Ite Manito. From the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Attorney Morris Marco Lim, Attorney Sheena Liz Balite, and Ms. Monique Santiago. From the Department of Science and Technology, attending virtually, we have Dr. Zarai Daang and Mr. Gilbert Oralan Jr. from the Department of Social Welfare and Development. We have uh, Mr. Luis Daniel De La Cruz, Mr. Lopez Alicum. From the uh, De Development Bank of the Philippines, attending virtually, we have Ms. Veronica Ernacio. From Go Negocio, we have uh, Rola Nukwi, Program Development Associate, attending virtually from the National Anti-Poverty Commission, we have the OIC Director, Mr. Vaughn Francis Messina, Mr. Ronaldo Mateo. From the National Economic and Development Authority, attending uh, physically, we have Mr. Ben Ganapin, Mr. Edward Martin Makasa Makasaja, and Ms. Zara Fiel Sibulo. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Mr. Fred Dino Logi Santiago and Attorney Diane Lucero. From Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, TESDA, we have uh, Ms. Judel Chris Juanan. From CESA, we have Ms. Denise Belbuzon. From the private sectors, from the Alliance of Philippine Partners in Enterprise Development Incorporated, we have Dr. Virginia Juan attending virtually. From De La Salle University, we have uh, Mr. Norby Salonga. From Oxfam, Philippines, we have Juvelin Salazar Dormitorio and Mr. Neil Igan Rojas attending virtually. From Export Development Council, we have Ms. Andrea Bonifacio attending virtually. 
From Insurance Commission, we have Attorney Mark, Dan Ligo, attending virtually. From Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, PAGCOR, we have Attorney Arnold Ferdinand Salvosa, attending physically. From uh, Poverty Reduction through Social Enterprise Coalition, attending virtually, we have Dr. Marilisa Dakanay and Ms. Irene May Pua. That's all, Mr. Chair. Salamat, uh, Comsec. Uh, again, salamat po sa lahat ng uh, distinguished uh, guests natin in the plenary and also online. Salamat sa pagpunta rito. As we have uh, six, several bills, six sets actually, so uh, we will ask, request our resource persons if we could keep the interventions brief, not more than five minutes, Anna. Uh, this is without prejudice to the submission of lengthy position papers and detailed position papers, which we assure you will be considered. So uh, just for the record, uh, Your Honors, uh, we have six sets of bills as mentioned. Uh, first is Senate Bill Number 761. This is on the Shared Service Facilities Project for MSMEs. That's the program of the DTI that we wish to institutionalize. And secondly, we have the uh, present uh, or the Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship Acts. Uh, these have several authors. We have Senate Bill 97 filed by yours truly, Senate Bill 536 filed by Senator Grace Post. Senate Bill 583, filed by Senator Ontiveros, 782, filed by the Senate President, and Senate Bill 1041, filed by the Majority Leader, uh, Senator Joel, and Senate Bill 1441, filed by Senator Jingoy Estrada. And then we also have Senate Bill, thirdly, the third set is the, or third uh, uh, bill is Senate Bill number 1868. This is the Protected Geographical Indications Act. And the fourth is Senate Bill 319, the Domestic Bidders Preference Act. Uh, fifth set is the Senate Bill number 628, filed by this representation, and uh, Senator Jingo Estrada, Senate Bill 793, and Senate, Senator Mark Villar, the Philippine Accreditation Act, as well as the National Quality Infrastructure Development Act. Uh, sixth is Senate Bill number 90, which is an amendment to the Exports and Investments Development Act. So the common thread, Your Honors, of these bills is to make uh, Philippine products more competitive uh, to ensure uh, higher quality and uh, see how government can assist the private sector in uh, coming up with uh, better offerings, more competitive offerings uh, geographically. Um, and uh, uh, this solves a lot of problems. This, uh, you know, with a view towards uh, an industrial policy which uh, um, not only produces quality goods but also creates uh quality jobs for our countrymen and perhaps maybe in the future may reverse some of the brain drain which is occurring in uh, certain industries and uh, of course with the view also towards inclusive development hence uh, some of the bills point towards uh, increased or uh, assistance to the msme sector the, the present uh, the set of uh, present uh, bills the acronym is present um and uh increased incomes uh, GDP per capita of our countrymen. So yun po yung mga uh, pinapakay nitong mga uh, iba't ibang mga uh, panukala. So first, uh, we'll, maybe we'll take up uh, the uh, in the agenda, we have the Shared Services Facilities Project for Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises. This is Senate Bill number 761. Uh, yeah, procedurally, we're just trying to, should we call everybody for all the bills? Or are some people just here for specific bills? Yes, sir. Uh, they are here for specific bills. For uh, SSF, uh, we have uh, from the DTI. Yeah, you give me the list. Okay, no, no, I already recognize it. Give me the list for different bills. Yeah. Thank you. So for we'll take up the SSF first, and after that, we'll take up the present uh, bill for MSMEs. So for SSF, we'd like to, of course, call DTI. We have Yusek Lantayona is present. Yes, sir. Yusek Lantayona is here. Yes, yes ma'am, please go ahead uh, with your comments. Paul. And we have Assistant Director Emma Susano, and of course, we have, uh, yeah, thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon to the members of the committee. Uh, we are, I, I just would like to um, uh, state our initial comment uh, on the proposed uh, Senate bill, institutional, institutionalizing the shared services facility project of uh, the DTI. Um, First, we laud the establishment of the SSF Fab Labs in every province. And um, 
attach the same to the SUCs and the LUCs. Uh, we have minor comments uh, proposed to the measure that uh, may be considered by the committee. Mr. Chair, in the second paragraph, section one of the proposed measure, we states the following. DTI shall also establish SSF fabrication uh, labs, which refers to high-end SSFs equipped with an array of flexible computer-controlled uh, tools, such as 3D printers that cover several different length scale and various materials in every province. Um, in, in every province to assist the MSMEs in the manufacturing of needed assets and products. The SSF Fab Labs shall be attached to the state universities and colleges or local universities or colleges of the province as determined by DTI for proper monitoring and maintenance. Mr. Chair, the existing SSF guidelines issued by DTI provides that the private schools, universities, and other similar government, academic, or training research institutions are also eligible cooperators or beneficiaries of the SSF project, especially the SSF Fab Labs, subject to the compliance of existing or selection criteria. To date, 37 of the 43 established as SSF Fab Labs are with the academe composed of the SUCs, government academic uh, training institutions, and private uh, like to request the bill to include private schools, universities, and other similar government academic or training research institutions as SSF cooperators beneficiaries in the proposed measure. Additionally, the cooperator universities or academic institutions must endeavor to engage their research and extension office and other similar units to ensure that the MSMEs shall be reached and prioritized in the use of the SSF Fab Labs. Notwithstanding the instructions under EO138, series of 2021, to devolve the functions and programs, including the SSF to the LGUs, the proposed bill, if passed into law, will greatly contribute to the strengthening the capacity of our MSMEs and in achieving the government's goal of creating inclusive economic growth. Uh, that is all for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Yusek. Uh, we'll certainly take your uh, recommendations into consideration and uh, uh, give them weight. May we just have a report as to the location of the shared, the existing shared service facilities and uh, may we request a performance report of, of this uh, service facilities. How do you measure, for example, their performance uh, of these SSFs? How do you judge whether they have been successful in helping our um, small businesses? Mr. Chair, is it okay uh, to submit to the committee our report? Yes, you uh, can give a report, but uh, could you summarize at least an indication? Because uh, we're here, we supported you budgetarily uh, and in other respects. Uh, but we'd like to also uh, receive some kind of feedback. Uh, so, I, I mean, you can put the details in your report, but maybe you can say a few sentences about okay. um, how you measure success, okay. uh, what are the uh, performance indicators. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, um, as of December 31, 2022, that is end of last year, we have already provided more than $2.64 billion to support the establishment of 3,473 SSF uh, facilities and it benefited around 570,000 potential and existing MSMEs, and it has already created more than 312,000 jobs. Um, we have, um, in our um, monitoring, we were able to measure that the, we were able to determine that there are about 10% of the SSFs that we have established that are not operational as of uh, that period. The rest uh, of the 
of these total SSFs are still uh, with operating. your permission, Yusek. I just want to acknowledge the presence online of Senator Nancy Pinay. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, Mr. Chair. So as I've said, uh, ninety percent of these total SSFs are already uh, are still operational as of this moment and uh, being utilized by our SSFs. We, um, and managed uh, by the different cooperators. And now um, the SSFs that we have are actually distributed all over the country, and most of them serve uh, the priority industry clusters that have been identified by the Department of Trade and Industry. We also have uh, Fab Labs, and um, uh, these SSFs um, are actually uh, benefiting this uh, MSMEs uh, that we have no, in the in the regions and in the provinces. So um, we monitor these SSFs uh, regularly uh, to really determine if they are being used properly by our cooperators, which entered into a usufruct agreement with us, and if the uh, if these uh, SSFs are being used uh, properly. Then after two years, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, these SSFs are already awarded to the cooperators. We'd also like to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, Senator Bongo online. Uh, good afternoon to he and to, to also to Senator Bina. And uh, anytime, please, uh, Senators, uh, please, you're free to intervene, ask questions, uh, make uh, manifestations as you may wish. Thank you for your for attending. Uh, thank you, Yusek. You mentioned the uh, job production, etc. I'll ask you as to the methodology of uh, measurement. Uh, you can put that in writing. But in terms of production, for instance, how do you measure their production? Tinulungan yung nga sila, pero anong nagawa nila? Nakapagbenta ba sila? Diba? Nag-increase ba yung benta nila? Do, do you have those metrics, for instance? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, because uh, we monitor uh, the beneficiaries of the SSFs. Uh, the ultimate beneficiaries of the SSF are regularly um, as to the number of new products that they were able to churn up and also the sales that they are uh, generating. So um, these uh, beneficiaries, we help them also market their products. They are beneficiaries also of the other programs of the Department of Trade and Industry such uh, the uh, such as marketing participation to the different marketing events like uh, trade fairs and um, uh, selling in the auto pubs and uh, go local pop-up stores sorry could you repeat the last part of your statement regarding the pop-up stores and the autocad what was that mm. I, uh, I stated, Mr. Chair, that uh, the assistance of uh, DTI to the MSMEs is not only confined to providing the SSF, such that the SSF beneficiaries, when they are already ready to sell their uh, new products, uh, new products that are developed, we tried uh, selling them and assisting what? them um, in terms of participation to marketing events such as trade fairs, um, selling in the auto park. Uh, with your permission again, Yusek, we'd like to acknowledge the presence physically of uh, Senator Robin Padilla, probably the one of the hardest working, if not the hardest working senator. Siya ang pinakamaga, isa sa pinakauling umuwi. Just like to acknowledge that effort on his part. Uh, go ahead, Yusek, thank you. And the, SS, uh, the, uh, the SME uh, beneficiaries, they can also sell their products or test the marketability of their products by selling in the auto pubs, which are actually the physical stores of uh, one town, one product, and mm -hmm. also in the uh, go local pop up stores, uh, Mr. Chair. Ah, maganda yon. So, diya yeah, sa auto stores yung produkto nila. Anyway, let's uh, no, let's work on our measurement para we know if we're successful or not. No, I, I, I've asked DTI to do that before, but very important that. Uh, Masukat natin because typically government ang sinusukat ng gobyerno. Yung sinong nabibigyan. O nabigyan namin yung isang libo. Pero ano nangyari dun sa isang libo, di ba? Let's follow through on the statistics uh, regarding their production and uh, and how we can, after that, hindi uh, tayo titigil dun, di ba? Uh, how we can further help them. But thank you. Thank you for that. We'll, we'll expect thank a you, uh, uh, 
a more detailed reporting. We have, we have to have just a, a general kind of overview of the bills given it's the first hearing, and we will refer them also to TWGs at the end of the day. Uh, any statement from our our uh, main statement from Bayo, Senator Robin? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, if uh, again, as I said, if Senator Binay or Senator Go wish to make any statement, they're free at any time. Po. Um, so we'll hear from DBM. We have uh, Acting Director Baraan and Acting Budget Specialist Attorney Borja for any comments that they may have on the, on the this is the SSF uh, bill, the Shared Service Facilities. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. As to the appropriations provision, we don't have any comments on this bill. Since it stated that it, the budgetary requirements should be included in the Annual General Appropriations Act. Uh, however, we, we also note that there are some activities of the SSF which, which shall be devolved to the LGUs. So I think the, we request the DTI to coordinate also with our SPIB to ensure that the the projects or activities under this uh, project will be in accordance with the devolution efforts of the government service. Thank you, Paul. Oh, ano yung STIB? Sorry. Uh, ano yung, sino, sino, kanino sila mag-coordinate with? With the DBM, sir, we have our unit, the unit in the DBM, which handles our devolution efforts, sir. Ah, okay. Sige, sige. Salamat. Thank you, DBM. Uh, now we go to go negotio. We have with us senior advisor Merle Cruz and the mentor Renea Cruz Tanyan. Ginagawa na talaga ng go negotio for a long time. So they have a lot of experience and can give us guidance. Go ahead, ma'am, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and other members of the committee. On behalf of Mr. Concepcion, we, we signify that we have no comment on the draft. But we hope to push for the same three pillars of business that Mr. Concepcion has been fighting for and lobbying for, which are money, market, and mentorship. On, on this line, we wish to see more connectivity between the given SSF facilities and these three M's. Three M's would stand for money, market, and mentorship. Facilities by itself would be part of money as facilities serve to be part of capital. But then uh, we wish to bring up the normal comment that the facilities by itself cannot really help the MSEs as we, even with the facilities provided, they cannot really prosper and thrive without follow-up services, which would, where, which would be where mentorship come in. So, from our part, that is what we will push for. As we have no comment on the draft, we, we hope to have more part in the provision of mentorship services or mentorship activities for the beneficiary of the SSF program. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat po. Uh, yes, definitely very good points. And we welcome the uh, involvement of Go Negosyo dito sa, um, sa pag-operate ng mga SSF labs and any uh, improvements or suggestions uh, would be welcome. Can we go to the League of Provinces? We have Miss Director Angelica Sanchez. Is she online or andito po siya? Virtual, yeah, ma'am. Director Sanchez of the LPP, League of Provinces. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes. So, so for the League of Provinces of the Philippines supports the draft bill, uh, the draft Mr. Chair, we have no comments as of this time. Po. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Salamat. Can we hear from the Cooperatives Development Authority? We have Deputy Administrator Ray Elevaso. Uh, is this online or uh, virtual? Sir, good afternoon. Virtual. Uh, virtual good afternoon. Po. Good afternoon, po, sir. Uh, sir, uh, we believe that the proposed SSF bill, uh, as per the as per uh, uh, pronouncement of the DTI, uh, is also promoting the well-being of uh, micro, small, medium cooperatives. Since cooperatives are within the ambit of uh, the definition of SMS, S, MSMEs under uh, the Magna Carta for MSME, sir. So we are uh, generally supportive uh, to the SSF bill as uh, stood for by our mother agency, the DTI. Maraming salamat, salamat sir. 
Thank you very much, Deputy Administrator. Uh, that's, those are the resource persons we have listed. Uh, may Would anyone care to comment before we move on to the next set of bills? Anybody's free to comment on uh, public hearing. Ito, so. No comments? Uh, okay. Huwag nyo lang kalimutan po yung mga provinces na Camarines Norte, tsaka Aurora. Huwag nyo lang kalimutan pagka gumagawa na tayo ng shared service facilities. Uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you very much uh, to our resource persons for the SSF bill. And we'll refer this bill to a TWG for fine-tuning and uh, um, polishing amendments. Salamat po. So now we'd like to take up the second set of bills. This is the Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship Act. Uh, last, last Congress, there were public hearings and a technical working group on the measure. So we'll, we'd like to take a look. The committee will take a look at those proceedings and uh, uh, whatever wisdom can be gleaned. Ano po yung makukuhang uh, aral dun sa mga uh, pagdinig na yun? Eh, Siyempre gagawin po natin. And of course, uh, one of the authors is the majority leader, so we'd like to read into the record his uh, opening statement, as well as any other opening statements that the uh, authors would care to make on these bills. So now for, uh, again, we'll call, para may iba naman yung order, pahingayin muna natin yung DTI, NEDA. We have Mr. Ben Ganapin, the Director of Trade Services and Industry Staff of NEDA. Uh, Director Ganapin, are you here, sir? Good afternoon, Hi. sir. Uh, Your Honor. Afternoon, uh, good afternoon as well to Senator uh, Binay, Senator Go, and Senator Robin Hood. Good afternoon, po. Um, sir, with, with regards to the to the uh, uh, the proposed uh, bill, uh, the NEDA recognizes this uh, the overall intention to strengthen social entrepreneurship in the country. We also welcome the effort to provide a formal definition of social enterprise, uh, not, I'm noting that there is still no consensus on the, on the definition of, of SE. We, we note that the proposed definition, however, cuts across a, a wide range of enterprises from micro, small, medium-sized uh, until cooperatives. So for instance, for, from micro, small, and uh, for, for both uh, um, um, uh, across these uh, enterprises, there may, we, we think that there may be a need to, to clarify how the proposed uh, benefits of, of the social enterprises will differ from the uh, MSMEs. Uh, so while, while we laud the, the proposed business intentions, um, maybe a, a, a sort of like a cohesive framework uh, is needed. Uh, otherwise, it may, it may lead or it may result in, in some overlaps of the government supports to for MSMEs and and social enterpriser. So, thank you very much, Bob. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Director. Uh, we'll hope you can help us uh, in uh, clarifying that in the bill later on. Uh, can we call on DPSA, Philippine Statistics uh, Authority, Assistant National Statistician Wilma Gillian? Is she here online or present physically? Miss Miss Gillian, can you hear us? Yeah, maybe we can ask the Comsec to alert the uh, the resource persons before we call them. Para sila na yung next ganon para magready na sila. I will go back to DTI. Kasi to lang dito si Yusek Kalantayona, ma'am. Uh, your comments, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon again, and uh, good afternoon also to the members of the committee. Um, actually, Mr. Chair, uh, in 2021, the MSMED Council or the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprise Development Council has uh, passed a working definition on uh, social enterprises. Mm -hmm. And it says that a social enterprise is a social mission driven organization that creates wealth while contributing to social well being and and ecological sustainability. In developing the country context, many social enterprises pursue poverty reduction or improving the quality of life of specific segments of the marginalized and vulnerable sectors as the major objective. 
As such, social enterprises have two core attributes that distinguish them from regular businesses. Number one, transformational engagement with marginalized sectors, which is in contrast to a pure transactional approach implemented by regular businesses. Number two, adherence to distributive enterprise philosophy, which is in contrast to the philosophy of creation and accumulation of wealth for the owners of a regular business. As such, Mr. Chair, a social enterprise undertakes a combination of practices that, dis that distribute wealth and create value among the poor and marginalized stakeholders. The nature of the MSME is wholly for profit with initiatives to reduce their own risk and to cultivate quality brands to better market products and services and engage clients. This is opposed to social enterprises who would be recognized as a unique classification that are not for profit and whose, whose primary purpose is on a social charitable dimension. We therefore suggest, Mr. Mr. Chair, that the regulatory council for social enterprises should be separate from the MSMED council. Nonetheless, we support the creation of a separate regulatory council and implementing agency, the Center for Social Enterprise Development, or the CSED. This is notwithstanding, those social enterprises must still register their incorporation as a social enterprise with the Securities and Exchange Commission. We also support the institutionalization of present program and in view uh, and view the end of goal of the goal of poverty reduction as the main impact of DTI's initiatives for enabling businesses and promoting entrepreneurship. However, while we also note that the components of the present program parallel many of the programs offered by the various agencies and attached agencies of the DTI, the main difference lies in the target beneficiaries of the present bills. And these are the poor, marginalized, and the basic sectors, which are not the sectors that uh, the DTI is uh, mandated to assist. Now, the RA 9501, or the Magna Carta for MSMEs, provision on the mandatory allocation has ceased uh, to exist since 2018. As such, the provision in the proposed uh, um, measure rendering the loans granted by financial institutions to social enterprises as compliance to the mandatory allocation will be relevant only until a related amendment to RA 9501, extending the mandatory allocation of credit resources be passed into law. So for now, Mr. Chair, uh, these are our- Naglaps na yon. Naglaps na 2018, na yon. Mr. Chair. Uh, I see, I see, okay. Uh, I see Senator Robin Hood is making a, was we were chatting maganda yung puntos niya I, I asked him if he could make it on record para marinig yung lahat yung mga puntos ni Senator Robin Hood with your permission sir Maraming salamat po mahal na taga Pangulo uh, magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat nagbubulungan po kami ng aking uh, idolo Ito po ang aking ano, number one uh, professor pag uh, economics and finances na ang pinag-uusapan. Kasi po pareho po kaming galing sa probinsya ng magsasaka at mga manging isda. Eh, sa akin pong uh, pagmumuni-muni, uh, yung pong ating mga kababayan na magsasaka at uh, manging isda, sila na po yung tinatawag natin, sabi nyo nga po, yung nasa poverty. Nakakalungkot man pong isipin at namnamin na kung sino pa yung mga nagtatrabaho para sa ating pagkain, sila po yung nasa bingit talaga ng kahirapan. Gusto ko lamang pong tanungin, uh, hindi po ba maaari nating dito sa uh, panukala na to at sa nabanggit nyo pong uh, Magna Carta sa MSMEs, hindi po ba kasama? ang mga magsasaka at manging isda dito sa mga MSMEs kasi hindi po ba sila pwedeng i-train na, na yung kanilang raw 
materials. Ito na, lagi na lang kasi yung raw, kukunin ng trader, may iwan yung magsasaka o manging isda, ang kikita yung trader. Hindi po ba ma makagawa tayo ng paraan na katulad po sa ibang bansa, ang mga magsasaka nila at ang mga manging isda nila ang merong matatawag na magandang buhay? Hindi po ba, sino po ba ang pwedeng Kanina, nakita ko po, nandyan yung CDA din. Uh, paano po ba ang uh, pwede natin gawin? Na una, ma-organize sila na maging kooperatiba. Pangkatapos, uh, tulungan nyo sila magkaroon ng uh, uh, medium o, o uh, ng mga negosyo. Kasi nakakaawa na po ang mga magsasaka natin. Uh, yung mga anak nila, ayaw na nilang gawing magsasaka. Uh, papano po kaya ang pwede natin? Hindi po kaya dapat ito yung tamaan nitong panukala na ito uh, na sinasabi. Ito po eh, oh, pagbabawas ng kahirapan at itaguyod ang panlipunan mga negosyo na may mga mahihirap bilang pangunahing stakeholder. Yun lang po. Uh, tanong lang po yung akin. Hindi naman po ako nagsesermon. Tanong lang po. Salamat, uh, Senator Robin Hood. Tama, maganda. I agree with his uh, point kasi uh, sa, sa, inyo, sa inyo naman yun, DTI, yung actually pag may uh, agribusiness products, so dapat pag-produced by MSME, di ba? Galing na sa, sa... Kasi parang walang assistance yata dyan masyado yung DA. So I think it's really in your backyard. Tama ba? Gam, ano Mr. Chair, um, napupuntahan din talaga namin itong mga sektor na ito Lalong-lalo na yung may mga interes na i-process nila, sir, yung Yo. kanilang mga produkto. Like, meron tayong mga farmer, ah, mga farmers, itong mga mangingisda na nagka-interes or tinraining namin silang i-process into, ano man tawag dyan? <laughs> Nakabutelya. <laughs> o mga bottled Edge products na. Oh. Itong mga, yung mga ganun. <laughs> Marami na sila... Uh, Uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Senator um, Robin, marami na silang nagkaroon ng gano'n na hindi lang nila binibenta yung kanilang mga produkto kung hindi sila na mismo yung mga nagpoproseso nito. Like say for example, sir, sa Aurora, naging, um, naging regional director kasi ako doon sa DTI, mm -hmm. sa Region 3. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Aurora is one of the provinces that we cover. Meron po doon mga farmers, meron mga nag, nagtatanim ng kakao, meron ng kakao. Mm. Pinaprocess nila ang kanila mga tsokolate, so nagiging na add na naka-add na, na tayo ng value doon yeah, sa kanilang mga agricultural products. Uh, so sir um, Senator Robin, uh, meron po tayong mga success stories na po diyan. Pero gusto po natin palaganapin yan. So, pasok sila dito sa, sa present. Sila. Ah, pwede silang bigyan ng tulong. Pwede po talaga. Ah. Pwede po talaga. Siguro ang challenge dyan, uh, Senator Robin, uh, Your Honors, eh yung baka hindi nila alam na may programang ganun. So, kailangan na uh, inform sila na in case mapasa ito, may ganung pondo na available para sa kanila. So, we need to... Kasi nga, DA ang tumutulong sila sa pagsasaka at pag-aani. Hmm. Pero pagdating dun sa marketing and uh, pagkalat ng kanilang produkto, Medyo, okay. alam ko si CDA, uh, we have with us... Uh, CDA. Uh, Oo nga, eh. Mr. Chairman. Eh. CDA si... din, trabaho rin nila yun. Ginagawa talaga nila yun. Sana ma... Ito po, sa CDA, pwede ko pong tanongin. Opo, opo. Sana... Uh, 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 si... Mahal na taga-pangulo, tanongin ko lang po itong ating uh, mga kakampi dito. Deputy Administrator Elevaso is sa online yan, nakikinigaw siya sa atin. Opo. Opo uh, uh, sir. Opo, boss. <laughs> mga kakilala po natin ito eh. Opo. Opo. Sir, tanong ko lang po yung pong dating na pag-usapan natin na uh, yung i-organize nyo yung mga magsasaka. Na uh, ito po ba eh na isakotopara na ilang prosyento na po yung ating na-organize natin para makabuo ng kooperatiba para makinabang po dito sa bagong panukala na ito kapag pumasa. Oh, sir, uh, magandang hapon po muli. Sir, tuloy-tuloy po yung aming uh, pag-organize ng mga uh, farmers cooperatives. Maging yung mga fisher folks na rin po, uh, sinama po natin sapagkat sila nga po yung uh, nasa uh, poverty line. Maramis po sa kanila, nasa poverty level. Uh, kaya nga po ang uh, CDA, puspusan po yung uh, uh, pakikipag-ugnayan po sa DA, sa BIFAR, uh, sa Filmec po. 
at sa mga iba pang uh, uh, sangay po ng DA, maging of course sa amin pong uh, DTI, ang aming mother agency, ay uh, nakikipag-ugnayan po kami. Meron po kaming mga memorandum of agreement, sir, na uh, napirmahan. At uh, kamakailan lamang, kahapon po ay nagpulong po yung tinatawag nating National Coordinating Committee on Cooperatives Development uh, sa panguna po ng aming chairman, Chairman Encabo, para po maayos yung uh, pag-uugnayan namin sa iba't ibang uh, ahensya ng gobyerno para matulungan primarily ang mga magsasaka at ang mga manging isda po at ibang sektor po. Uh, uh, ma uh, ma mahal na ta tagapangulo, ma 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 magagawa po ng CDA, total mother agency nyo po yung DTI po, hindi ba po? Yes sir, uh, sila po, po yung uh, mother agency. Mapaprioritize po natin sila yan, no? kapag ka ito po ay naging batas, itong mga farmers and manging isda po natin, ano? mapaprioritize natin sila kasi may produkto na sila. Eh. <laughs> e, ano, tutulungan na lang po nyo siguro sila kung paano magnegosyo. Yun na lang po. Total, Opo. nandyan naman din yung go-negosyo. Yes sir, makikipag-ugnayan po kami sa DTI upang uh, ma maisaayos natin po ito. Maging kailangan maging businessman na rin yung ating mga magsasaka at maging isda. Kailangan mailagay na po nila sa sarili na yun na sila ay mga businessman. Opo. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat po. Yes, sir, maraming, maraming salamat po. Salamat, salamat po, po, Senator Robin Hood, uh, Idol. At uh, sa, ngayon, sa ngayon po tayo dun sa sinabi. Yes? Uh, who was that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe. Be... Ah, Arta. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Director Kilala. Go ahead. Yeah, as Senator Angara, Senator Robin, sir, my schoolmate <laughs> in St. Louis Boys Eye, sa Baguio City po. Uh, susugan lang po namin yung nabanggit ni Senator uh, Robin Hood. Uh, kaya nga po, bagamat hindi kami kasama dito sa bill na ito, na hinihingan po ng uh, uh, kaukulang uh, komento, eh, gusto namin kunin itong pagkakataon, uh, Your Honors, na... Sana po maisama si Anti-Retip Authority doon sa SEDC. Kasi po isa po sa mandato ng Anti-Retip Authority ay uh, i-harmonize po ang lahat ng mga prosesong isinasagawa upang mapadali po ito para po sa ease of doing business. If our farmers later on will be treated as small-time businessmen, then all the more they need the help of the government for them to fast track. Hindi po biro mag-apply sa CDA. And dito yung mga tiga Cooperative Development Authority, we have had MOAS with them para ho sana bigyang pansin itong mga maliliit na mga negosyante na makakuha ng mabilis na registration. Sa ngayon ho, may record kami kung gaano katagal ang pagkuha ng kanilang mga registration. So, yun ho, can, can under you place that on the record? Para we can see. Opo, uh, we will be giving you information na yun dito ho sa ating committee na nagkaroon na ng maraming reklamo patungkol dyan sa pag-a-apply ng kanilang mga registration. So nagpapasalamat kami dahil na atasa ng ARTA na maisama dito sa committee at sa hearing na ito upang ipaalam namin na itong mga magagandang adhikain natin para sa mga maliliit na negosyante ay mas mapapaigting at mapapagana po natin kung si Anti-Retip Authority po ay mabibigyan ng pagkakataon na pag-tagni-tagniin po ang mga business processes po na sinasagawa para mas mabilis ang permitting nila, ang licensing nila, pati ho doon sa mga trading nila. Kung may mga balak sila na mag-import eventually, kakailanganin ho ng suporta na manggagaling po dito sa trabaho ng Anti-Retip Authority. Yan lang po, uh, Senator, salamat yeah, po. That's a good point, uh, Director. Maraming salamat and I'm sure uh, your, your contributions there will be welcome. No? Nakatulong ho talaga yan. School maker, man. <laughs> Sinong mas matas ang grado sa inyong dalawa ni... Eh, joke lang, joke lang po, joke lang. <laughs> um, sa NAPSI naman ho, uh, we have Director Von Francis Messina. Uh, this is the National Anti-Poverty Commission. Uh, uh, go ahead, sir. Go thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, we would like to commend the authors of the uh, Senate Bill. Um, we would like to recommend the following initial comments from the NAPSI basic sectors. Uh, first, on the definition of the poor, uh, ito yung parang uh, kalinya rin yung sinasabi kanina ni 
Senator Padilla na na yung makakapekto kasi ito do sa scope ng beneficiaries of the Senate bill. So uh, under RA 11291 otherwise known as the Magna Carta for the Poor enacted into law in 2019 it directs the NAPSI to oversee and monitor compliance with its provision and has expanded the definition of the poor provided in RA number 8425 to account for multidimensional poverty whereas the poor should be identified not only on the basis of income but also on the on the on the, the deprivations on the fundamental rights of the poor we recommend the revision of the definition of the poor provided in section 3 letter f of the bill to indicate as follows poor as defined in ra number 11291 otherwise known as the magna carta of the poor refers to individuals or families whose income falls below the poverty threshold as defined by the NEDA and or who cannot afford in a sustained manner to provide their minimum basic needs of food, health, education, housing, or other essential amenities of life as defined under RA8425, otherwise known as the Social Reform and Poverty Elevation Act. Also, in determining who constitutes the poor, the multidimensional poverty index determined by the PSA shall be considered. Uh, second, on the definition of the basic sector, ito po kasi ay makaka-apekto doon sa focus ng programa at maaaring representation ng batayang sector sa mga mekanismo. We note that the definition of the basic sectors is provided in Section 3, Letter C of the Bill. Yet, in general, there are no formal roles or responsibilities assigned to them in the bill. In any case, should the authors opt to revisit the same and consider the formal representation or engagement by the basic sectors in any of the mechanism proposed therein, we remind of the composition of the basic sectoral representation in the NAPSI as provided in Section 6 of RA 8425 as follows. Uh, we have representatives from each of the following sectors, the farmers and landers, rural workers, the artisanal fisher folk, the urban poor, the indigenous cultural communities or the IPs, workers in the formal sector and migrant workers, workers in the informal sector, the women, youth and students, persons with disabilities, the victims of disasters and calamities, senior citizens, the NGOs, children, and uh, lastly, the cooperatives. And on accessibility and transparency, we further note the eligibilities set forth on the availment of the benefits and incentives under Section 14 and 15 as persons with disabilities and social enterprise service, respectively, as mechanisms that ensure to benefit the poor with suggestions to provide monitoring accessibility to primary stakeholders including the NAPSI upon the creation of a dedicated website and centralized database. And lastly, on NAPSI representation, we suggest that the Section 7 of, of the Senate, Senate Bill Number 536, Section 8 of the Senate Bill Number 583, Section 5 of the Senate Bill Number 782, Social Enterprise Development Council or of Senators Po, Senator Antaberos, and Senator Subiri, respectively, shall be adopted on the final draft of the Senate Bill to ensure that the Council is well represented by the concerned government agencies and representatives of the SEs from various uh, groups, and we strongly support the inclusion of the NAPSI on its membership. Additional comments from other concerned NAPSI basic sector councils will be submitted upon finalists. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat, Director Messina. Uh, well taken po yung sinabi ninyo. And uh, if you can help us expand, uh, that's welcome to be welcome kasi yung intention talaga niya is to be inclusive. Thank you. So we have uh, from DBP, Senior VP Veronica Ernacho. Uh, she here uh, online. I'll go to the next one. DepEd, uh, Director okay. Samuel Sullivan. DepEd. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon po. 
Yes, are you are you Director Sullivan? Go ahead, sir. Yes, Paul. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the Department of Education uh, expresses uh, its uh, appreciation and support to uh, the said the Senate bill on social entrepreneurship uh, because um, in our department, uh, one of the curriculum exits is uh, on entrepreneurship. And uh, based on the Section 16 of the Senate bill, uh, it is uh, it mentioned that ed to uh, consider uh, the social entrepreneurship content in the curriculum. So we guarantee, Mr. Chair, that said content uh, is in our K-12 uh, curriculum. So our position paper, Mr. Chair, will be uh, sent through our uh, Office of the Undersecretary for Legal and Legislative Affairs. Thank you, po, Mr. Chair. At salamat po, Director Sullivan. Sa test naman, si Attorney Jodel Kwanan from the Legal Division. Attorney Kwanan. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and afternoon. Um, to the members of the Honorable Committee. Um, on behalf of TESDA, I would like to express po our full support to the proposed bill. Um, Mr. Chair, we would like to uh, manifest that we will be submitting our position paper um, once we secure the necessary approval for the committee's consideration. Po. Okay, salamat, attorney. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Insurance Commission, uh, Attorney Laigo, Mark Dan Laigo from the Insurance Commission. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, your oh. honorable members of the committee, magandang hapon po. Uh, on behalf of the Insurance Commission, I am Attorney Mark Dan Laigo, Legislative Lead Officer of the Commission. Mr. Chair, just for the record, we have submitted yesterday, February 15, our official comments with regard to Senate Bill Number 97. Contents uh, thereof state that the Insurance Commission fully supports the intention of the bill to pursue the inclusive growth strategy that will promote an environment conducive to the development and growth of a vibrant social enterprise sector engaged in poverty reduction to empower the poor and to develop a strong social entrepreneurship. Uh, specifically, Mr. Chair, the Insurance Commission supports a Section 13 of the bill which mandates Insurance Commission to issue necessary rules and regulations and implement measures to ensure that insurance industry shall provide malalang, malalang. Malalang. both life and non-life for social enterprises and their uh, stakeholders among the poor. Furthermore, social enterprises shall be eligible to be licensed agents or delivery channels for their clients and constituents. Uh, Mr. Chair, the Insurance Commission sees this provision is aligned with the concept of micro-insurance as defined under the insurance code as amended as a financial product or service that meets the risk of protection needs of the poor. Um, micro-insurance products are being offered to low-income and informal sector of the country. Examples of these products are, mic are micro-agri, or micro health and micro pre need. Furthermore, this commission has issued relative circular on the adoption and implementation of enhanced micro insurance frameworks um, that caters the uh, guidelines for the uh, um, for the availment of these micro insurance products. Um, this commission likewise recognizes that the inclusion of section 13 will also boost the growth of insurance um, industry while providing affordable insurance coverage to the country's low income and informal sector. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attorney. Pero may question lang ako. Kung sakaling, yung nga, paramihan itong mga social enterprise or SE, yes. mga informal sector yan, di ba? So, walang, meron bang ano yan? SSS, G, uh, PhilHealth, Pag-ibig? What, what do you think? Parmian siguro wala, di ba? Sa Saksa Co-ops, for instance, meron. Wala ho siguro yan, eh, di ba? Um, Mr. Chair, so far as the Insurance Commission is concerned, we are mandated just to uh, regulate the insurance industry when it comes to life and then life. Uh, when it comes to social insurance, I think there um, it is not within the uh, mandate of the Insurance Commission. Ah, uh, okay. Is there any product? 
na pwedeng i-avail ng mga taga-informal sector yes, para, sir. Um, for social security uh, na would be classified under your jurisdiction. Nagbabasakali, baka sakali lang ako tayo, baka meron eh. Meron bang ganun? To, for social protection. And kung meron man, ano yung pwedeng mekanismo para mapababa yung kung sakaling may premium, ganun? Uh, may naisip po ba kayo? Oh. For social insurance, sir, I have no um, knowledge if there is one. But uh, currently, sir, um, for the life and non-life uh, insurance companies, they offer uh, micro-agri, micro-health, and micro pre -need. Basically, the coverage, uh, the premium is low. Actually, under the amended insurance code, um, it is mandated that um, the premium does not exceed to seven and a half percent of the current daily minimum wage rate. And in here, and in seven and a half of the minimum um, base rate. Oh. Size, um, more likely base rate. Are the minimum base rate? So I'm not familiar with that. Uh. Five thirty-seven, sir. As of ah. so, naglalalo, naglalaro po siya sa forty pesos to fifty pesos. Ang a year, a year. Yan ang babayaran niya. Ah, uh, month. <laughs> Monthly, 40 pesos a month. And, and ano yung coverage niya? Um, ang coverage po niya is does, based sa lesser is does not exceed 1,000 times of the minimum wage. 1,000 so, times the minimum wage. So, ano yung minimum wage? Sabi mo natin 500 pesos. So, does not exceed. Uh, pagka lumampas na yun, hindi na siya micro. Garo ba yan? Hindi na siya magiging micro, sir. Opo. Okay. Uh, just, just out of curiosity, meron ba tayong datos dyan? Ilan ang, nag, uh, nag, ilan ang merong micro-insurance plans, ganyan? Yes, sir. Um, hindi ko lang po... You can submit na lang. Pwede nyo lang i-submit, yes. uh, attorney. Oh, yes. baka, uh, sir, oh, sir, I'll have to refer yeah. then. Can we, can we can inquire as to the state of micro-insurance and uh, yung ano na lang, broader question. Nabanggit nyo yung social insurance. Sino bang in-charge dyan sa social? Kung wala sa insurance commission or sa IC? Sino? Yes, I is. Yes, yes. Ah, okay. So, parang ano sila? Social security. Okay. Yes, copy, copy. Thank you, thank you. Salamat, attorney. Yes, sir, on your request for the uh, data on microinsurance. Ah, thank you. Salamat, thank you. salamat po. Salamat po, attorney. Uh, we'll go back kung nandiyan na yung DBP. Nandiyan na ba? Online? Yes, uh, VP Arnacio. Opo. Yes, sir. Um, we will submit our position paper on the bill next week if you do. Hello, us. Salamat, salamat. Thank uh, you, Mr. Thank you, thank you, uh, VP. Uh, we'll ask our comsec to yes. issue and also to maybe the SSS. Kasi we're talking about social security protect, social protection ng mga nasa informal, yung mga nabanggit ni Senator Robin. So siguro, gawin na natin comprehensibo yung, yung discussion natin. Anybody in charge of uh, providing benefits, in, in, increasing the benefits for the informal sector. Uh, can we call on the present coalition? We have Dr. Marie Dakanay, the convener. And ito ho ba siya? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I actually have a set of slides kasi I'm participating online. Yes, yes, ma'am. Go ahead, ma'am. So, uh, I'd like to... Last week, to assist you. Pakitulungan na lang siya. Kayo po ba mag-share or ako? I copy the slides there. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's on the screen, yeah, ma'am. We can. Yeah. Doctor Nakanay, so, we can see your presentation on screen. Thank okay. you very much. Salamat po. Um, good afternoon, distinguished senators and members of the committees and uh, and the various uh, resource persons present here. We would just like to express our support for the sure. enactment of the poverty sure. reduction through social entrepreneurship bill. Hindi po nag move yung aking slide. Kaya. And yan. Um, yun pong, sorry. Uh, gusto ko lang po ipakilala yung aming coalition, yung Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship Coalition. Alliance po kami ng mga social enterprise practitioners, uh, gaya ng um, human nature, append, yan. Uh, resource institutions po ng social enterprises, gaya ng Oxfam. Advocates at saka NGOs, uh, gaya ng uh, Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement at saka Ideals, nandito po kasi sila. Tapos members ng Akademia, gaya ng Lasal, nandito din po siya. 
uh, ang un basis of unity po namin is to advance social entrepreneurship as an approach to poverty eradication and economic development. Yun pong bakit po namin sinusuportahan yung present bill. Nakikita po kasi namin na yung multiple crisis na kinakaharap ng mga Pilipino ngayon, yung development crisis, yung climate crisis, yung pandemic, uh, yun pong nagbe-bear ng brunt ng problema ay yung mga mahihirap na kung titignan po natin yung statistics ngayon, mga 27% na po ng ating populasyon ang mahihirap. No? At uh, napag-usapan na nga po yung mga iba-ibang sektor na to. Um, we are fully supportive of the definition of uh, social enterprises as shared by USEC Lantayona of the DTI and as uh, stated in the bill also. At gusto ko lang pong susugan yung uh, at gusto ko lang pong sagutin ng konti yung concern ni Senator Padilla at sa, sa inyo po, Senator Angara, yung tungkol dun sa hindi nakikinabang yung mga mahihirap sa ekonomiya, yun pong, yun pong mga social enterprises kasi, iba sila sa ordinaryong business kasi ang una nilang ginagawa ay tinutulungan nilang organisahin at makinabang yung mga mahihirap para sa pagbibusiness sila yung nakikinabang first and foremost. No? Kaya nga sinasabi natin na may transformational engagement with the poor ang mga social enterprises. Ang ibig din pong sabihin nito, yung mga nasa informal sector ngayon na hindi napapansin dahil hindi sila part ng formal economy, yung transformational engagement with the poor, ang ibig pong sabihin ay gagawin silang bahagi ng formal economy through organizing them as members and stakeholders of social enterprises. At dun sa pakinabang, um, yun po kasing mga social enterprises dahil gumagawa sila ng uh, wealth pero dinidistribute nila yung wealth na to sa mga mahihirap na stakeholders, ito po ay nakakapagdulot uh, ng inclusive growth dahil nakikinabang yung mga mahihirap sa, pag, uh, sa, sa, uh, sa creation ng wealth sa ating ekonomiya. Um, gusto ko lang pong ipaliwanag na sa social enterprises ngayon, nung gumawa po ako ng study noong 2007, 30,000 po yung social enterprises na nakita namin na nag exist sa Pilipinas. But in 2017, a study uh, showed that 164,000 na po ang mga social enterprises sa Pilipinas. And this growth, this phenomenal growth over a period of 10 years was despite the fact na walang government support. So ang uh, nakikita po namin with government support, which is the intention of the Senate bills, uh, tingin namin mas malaki yung madudulot na pakinabang sa mga mahihirap ng social enterprises. Gaya nga ng sinabi po, micro, small, medium, and large enterprises ang social enterprises. Pero the reason why they're different is because transformational yung engagement nila with the poor and nagdi-distribute sila ng pakinabang sa mahihirap. At yung forms po na tinitake nila, pwede silang cooperatives, foundations, non-stock corporations, stock corporations, single proprietorship at partnership. Pero lahat sila ay nag-create ng products and services para sa mga markets at sinisilbihan yung mga mahihirap habang ginagawa nilang sustainable yung kanilang operations. No? So nagiging profitable sila or may surplus po din sila. Noong 2016, gumawa ng study tungkol sa social enterprises at nakita na ang social enterprises at that time were able to create 17,000 jobs and around uh, generated $21 million or 1.1 billion pesos in value. Tapos marami na po kaming case studies na pinablish ng iba't ibang institutions na uh, nagpapakita na maraming social enterprises ay talagang effective vehicles for moving the poor out of poverty, whether they're farmers, fishers, indigenous people, people in the informal economy, persons with disability, and the like. Uh, ang gusto po namin din sanang susugan ay yung key provisions ng social enterprise bill na we support. For example, in terms of incentives, we support yung special allocation or preferential treatment in government procurement, yung pagbibigay ng tax credits, at yung pagbibigay ng cash incentives. Halimbawa, kung may persons na with disability na employed ng social enterprises, dahil yung current na practice ay 75% lang ng minimum wage ang binibigay, kailangan may cash incentives para 100% na bibigay sa mga persons with disability. Isa pa din pong provision that is very important, I think, is yung comprehensive support program na may hybrid financing. Isa po kasing problema dun sa enterprise development programs, wala pong pondo 
na, 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 na tumutulong para organisahin at i-capacitate yung mga poor para maging stakeholders ng mga enterprises. So, meron pong provisions sa current bills na may social enterprise development fund na we support fully dahil we need these grants to capacitate the poor as stakeholders in agricultural and non-agricultural value chains so that they can become stakeholders of the formal economy. Um, tapos, um, we also support your non-collateralized loans through special credit windows with a guarantee fund pool. Marami pong um, credit programs na hindi na avail ng mga micro, small, and medium enterprises dahil nga wala silang collateral. Tingin din namin sa mga social enterprises, kailangan ng non-collateralized loans para ma-access ng mga micro and small enterprises para sila mag-grow. So, yung other provisions we support is the recognition of women and men as equal partners in the development of social enterprises, tapos equal access um, and equal rights to social enterprise resources. At gaya ng sinabi na nga ng DepEd din, yung integration ng social enterprise content in the educational system at all levels. Um, isa pa hong napakahalagang provision sa bill that we support is yung National Poverty Reduction through Social Entrepreneurship Program. Uh, where the social enterprises are seen as partners, the poor in strategic economic subsectors. Uh, ito po ay mga identifiable by raw material source or finished products. At ito po ay uh, para ang sinasabi lang po natin, hindi nga po pwedeng production lang ang tinitignan, kailangan tinitignan din yung processing at kailangan din tinitignan yung end markets. No? So value chains po yung approach. So we, uh, we support the present bill's provisions on strategic economic subsectors as units of planning so that, for example, if government has strategic industries for the big corporations, we believe there should be strategic economic subsectors as units of planning to move the poor out of poverty in strategic economic subsectors. And then, uh, marami na pong economic subsectors kung saan nandyan yung mga social enterprises, yung coco choir, muscovado sugar, organic rice, organic vegetables, Coffee, cacao, banana, basic and essential oils, livestock, bamboo, educational toys and school chairs. At ang uh, gusto sana nating effect po ng National Poverty Reduction to Social Entrepreneurship Program ay ma-enable yung mga social enterprises to become uh, agents and successful uh, partners of government in poverty reduction on a grand scale. Uh, gusto lang namin po din magpasalamat sa mga champions ng poverty reduction through social entrepreneurship bill sa Senate, si Senator Subiri, si Senator Angara, si Senator Poe, Pantiveros, Villanueva, and Estrada. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much for a very good uh, presentation, Dr. Takanay. Thank you for educating us as to the work of the current uh, uh, social enterprises and how we can move forward. Salamat po. And uh, well, sana maganda ho yung chance natin palagi ko na mapasa itong panukala kasi ang author si Senate President si Majority Leader yung, yung at saka si Deputy Minority Leader Ontiveros is also an author so tingin ko may bipartisan support ika nga itong ating panukala uh, and I was looking just at the list of the strategic economic subsectors uh, parang baka we should study also with the help of DTI how we can ramp up the ano a lot of them are at basic agriculture Pero how do we transition to more sophisticated products uh, in, term, in the same sector and also in other uh, sectors? With your help, uh, Dr. Nakanay. Tapos pangalawa yun sa, sa access to credit. Can we also maybe sama natin dito yung Credit Information Corporation, which is a body of government, which... Uh, and, and also, ang, ang gusto natin mangyari is... Uh, kasi yung pakay ng Credit Information Corporation, that's also, I think, DTI attached or SEC attached yun is to lower the cost of credit. Kasi nga, karamihan ng borrowers walang credit record, walang credit information, walang collateral, as you mentioned. So, eh, kung meron lang silang good paying habits, that already is a uh, a go signal, at least for some of the lenders. They will There will appear lenders who, and uh, baka ma-access ma nila yung whatever, 1% of banks or financial institutions, which is set aside for concessional loans no so i think with if the actors in the government work together baka ma-achieve natin yan pero hindi baka hindi rin alam kasi nung ating mga social enterprises na may ganung uh, mekanismo sa gobyerno na makakatulong sa kanila as long as they napakita nila nagbabayad ako ng aking uh, utilities nagbabayad ako ng aking uh, uh, cellphone bill 
that's part of the credit record of a borrower. So, uh, malamang kung meron siyang ganun, de, uh, there's no reason why they cannot access uh, credit uh, going forward. Salamat again, Dr. Nakanay. Uh, now we'll go to, uh, we have pala with us DA also. So, we have Mr. Israel Manzano of the Agricultural Credit Policy Council. So, yan, very crucial po yan. Yung DA as mentioned, yan po yung puntos ni Senator Robin Hood Kadina. Maybe we can hear from DA uh, dito sa present on the present bills. Mr. Manzano sa DA, ho? Uh, Mr. Chair, good afternoon po. Good afternoon, good afternoon, po. po. Good afternoon din po, Senator Robin Hood. Uh, the DA uh, supports the passage of the present bills. Uh, naniniwala po kami na itong present bill ay makakatulong sa mga programa po ng Department of Agriculture uh, sa mga activities namin na nag aim na mapalakas ang ating agri-feature-based enterprises. <clears throat> so, we will be submitting our official position paper pero uh, we love the intent of the proposal as they may help improve access to credit by these social enterprises. And the proposal are also timely in view of the, in helping the sectors get back on its feet during this recovery phase. Uh, we also appreciate the holistic approach as to the uh, to include also the guarantee and insurance mechanisms. Uh, uh, in relation to some mandated credit quotas to banks, uh, we may note na meron po tayong RA 11901, which is the, the Agriculture, Fisheries, and Rural Development Financing Act of 2022. Ito po naglalayon na mandated credit po ito ng 25% na dapat ma-extend sa rural communities, which include this farmers, fisher folk, agrarian reform beneficiaries, and also their members ng kanilang household, at lalong-lalo na po yung mga micro SFNAs, including the social enterprises. So, siguro, uh, 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 the committee should look into it, kung ano talaga yung na percentage ng i-aalat para dito kasi meron na po tayong 25% dito sa RA 11901 and then meron na din pong 4% din po sa RA 11293 which is the Philippine Innovation Act para sa MSMEs. Tapos we support also yung pag-provide ng tax incentives for social investors that choose to put money to a business endeavor or activity. So, Yun nga po, uh, Mr. Chair and so Senator Robin Hood, we will submit po yung official paper namin once na mag-gather po lahat yung position ng agencies sa DA and sa programs and all units. Muli po magandang hapon po at maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Salamat po. Maganda po yung sinabi ninyo, uh, Sir. Pakilagay na lang in writing para maalala namin yung mga batas na binanggit ninyo and we will see how we can uh, improve if, if ever. Salamat po na marami. Can we call on PSA uh, uh, Julieta Solivan uh, who is online I believe. Julieta Solivan from PSA. Ma po. Philippine Cooperative Center uh, CEO Edwin Bustillos. Are you here sir? Um Online po, sir? Hi. Uh, yeah, go good ahead, afternoon. Sir. Go ahead po. Uh, sir, actually, um, not Sir Edwin. Si Sir Edwin po ay nandyan po currently sa Senate, pero okay. to manifest, kami na po ang represent sa kanya as uh, staff po no, ng Philippine Cooperative Center. So, first po muna, we would like to... Yeah, he's here, uh, he's here. Go ahead, sir. Yes, Can please identify yourself, sir. Uh, uh, sir Ray for, Santiago record. po. Sir Ray Santiago from okay. Philippine Cooperative Center. So first, we would like to show our appreciation to Senator Robin Hood, uh, the Vice Chairperson po of Senate Committee on Cooperatives for bringing up and recognizing uh, cooperatives 
uh, as part of uh, present. At the same time, we would also like to uh, pre- uh, show our appreciation to Sir Ray Elevazo from CDA, our mother agency. Uh, so for Philippine Cooperative Center, uh, we are a tertiary cooperative. Uh, we show our support to the bills, though we have several comments on certain provisions uh, of the different bills, uh, into which we have inputted our comments on uh, a position paper uh, that we have submitted already. Uh, as such, no, uh, we believe that cooperatives is one of the vehicles towards poverty reduction and empowerment of the basic sector and marginalized sector. Uh, however, some key points, you know, uh, this is also included in our position paper. We are not in consonance with uh, SB 536 uh, on SE Development Fund. Uh, SSS and GSIS, uh, we believe, should not be included in the pool. Likewise, PDTF should be removed in the said bill as it has its own law in implementing it. Uh, it is within the domain of the National Anti-Poverty Commission under RA uh, 8425. Uh, another fo- uh, another part that we would like to give focus is in regards to the Social Enterprise Development Council, we believe it is important for cooperatives to be represented at all times uh, in the SEDC uh, because there are more than 11,100 reporting cooperatives nationwide uh, directly employing more than 580,000 individuals and generating indirect employment of more than 2.3 million. No. Uh, so some of these cooperative members now composed of farmers, uh, fisher folk, workers, entrepreneurs, uh, women, lumads, Muslims, and the youth, senior citizens, uh, some are government employees, police, military, former rebel com- combatants, and even the handicapped. Uh, so clearly, this is a manifestation that uh, cooperatives have the ca- capacity to participate you know, in the sustainable uh, development goals in the eradication of poverty and hunger and providing uh, decent work. Uh, Also, in regards to the Center for Social Enterprise Development, we also recommend uh, that research and development should directly involve organizations in the cooperative sector in developing and enhancing a research and development system for social enterprises. Uh, This would ensure that there would be less disconnect between policy and actual work on the ground. Uh, Yun lang po muna. Thank you, Mr. Santiago. Very good points. Uh, we'll definitely include the cooperative sector in uh, the bodies uh, involved here and as well as in R&D. Uh, and big supporter nyo, ang aming Senate President. He was the former chair of the Committee on Cooperatives dito sa Senado. So definitely, dapat di mawala yung cooperativa. Can we now hear from Go Negosyo? We have uh, Senior Advisor Merle Cruz as before. Uh, any comments, ma'am, on the present bills? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, um, Ms. Marley is not yet around and I'm here. Uh, Rowe, Renea, Renea? Yes. Renea Cruzdan, sorry. Yeah. On Go behalf ahead. of Go Negosyo, we, we express our support for the proposed bill and then we, sorry, at this point we again signify our support for three M's, which is money, market, and, and mentorship. So the small and the social entrepreneurs will benefit a lot, a lot of the poor. And we see the poor help helping other poor, thereby supporting our advocacy, which is actually poverty reduction through entrepreneurship. I express the joy of our boss, Joey Gonegosho, regarding the recent survey which has signified the big increase in terms of the level of entrepreneurship mindset of filipinos and we hope to be able to claim to be behind that and we hope to continue to work for the same advocacy so we look forward to working with any implementing agencies that will be designated for the for the fulfillment of the goals of the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Renea. Salamat at uh, may contribution din ang go negosyo dyan sa... Mr. Chair, uh, on din na po si Julieta Solivan from PSA. Um, Julieta Solivan from PSA. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, please. Hello. Good good afternoon po, Se- Senator Angara. Afternoon ho. So, for Philippine Statistics Authority po, the PSA fully supports the passage of the above mentioned bills that will boost the economic growth and development for competitive export industries in the country. 
since the invitation was uh, the notice for the invitation was late lang po na received ng PSA so the position paper is still under the review of our NS and will be sent later to the to the Senate po so in the PSA as a central statistics authority of the government is committed to provide updated and reliable statistics to aid the vulnerable body in fulfill, fulfilling its duty of formulating government policies needed that will address the pressing issues related to trade and commerce. And the PSA is also continuously studying the bill as proposed and manifest the submission of a supplemental comments as may be deemed necessary. That's all, Paul. Chair. Salamat, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll await your submission, huh? Uh, can we now hear from League of Provinces? Do you have any comment? Hey, Ma'am Sanchez. Uh, or you will also submit, I assume you'll just be submitting your position paper. Okay, sige. I think we've any other resource person who wishes to speak and uh, I didn't recognize. Hi, Ma'am, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, plus. Please identify yourself for the record, Ma'am. Magandang hapon po, Mr. Chair, si Susanita Tishiorna from the Alliance of Workers in the Informal Economy and at the same time with the National Anti-Poverty Commission Workers in the Informal Sector. So maraming salamat po sa pagnadagdagan ang author from 3 to 6, so which means na talagang kailangan ang social enterprises. So ang tanong po, ang unang tanong ng batayang sektor, ng informal sector especially kasi enterprises to pag informal sector ibig sabihin economic unit yan hindi tao so it's really really relates to social enterprise so ang tanong po namin ano nga ba ang kaibahan ano ba ang pagkakaiba nitong present bill kaysa ibang mga programa o batas ng pamahalaan pagdating sa poverty reduction ang dami-dami na pong batas um, kami as early as 2004, nag-compile kami kasama ang Bureau of Rural Workers. But there were around 168 laws about access to credit, etc. But until now, ito pa rin yung aming problema. So, bakit nga ba? So, katulad ng Bambi, masayang-masay kami in 2002 kasi nagsasaad ang Bambi na if formalize na yung informal sector and we will have, we will enjoy the preferential treatment to credit, etc. Pero until now, ito pa rin ang problema. At hindi lang informal sector in general, farmers, fisher folks who belong to the definition of informal sector, parehas, halos lahat ng batayang sektor na naghahanap buhay na ang doon parang sa uh, tinatawag na marginalized enterprises under Public Act 8425, yung NAPSI law, ay pare-parehas po. So, nais naming na, na sa pag-usad ng advocacy, nakita na namin na merong kulang, merong malaking pagkukulang ang ating mga batas, nagsusuntukan ang ating mga batas, walang coherence, sorry for that, Pero yun yung aming nakikita, nagsusuntukan ng mga batas. This law says that it is so, pag in namin, sasabihin na naman ng isang batas na hindi po pwede because of that. So, kaya nag-participate kami to address that and the International Labor Organization in a conference addressed these issues and the recommendation at tanggap ng buong 168 member countries ng ILO that the informal economy Specific, uh, generally, is not mainstreamed into national legislation. So, hindi kami. Kaya, kung makikita mo kahit sa statistics, there is statistical invisibility. So, paano ba ang ating poverty reduction kung ang katotohanan ay more than 80% are in the informal sector? So, mga manggagawa o mga negosyanting uh, nasa laylayan, vulnerable and marginalized. So, yun po. So, kaya kami, nais namin na uh, Baka pwede nating tingnan yung pag, pagtawag nito, dagdagan ng solidarity. So magiging from present to present para ma-include na yung pag-address ng uh, drivers to informality. I think yan din ang mga problema ng DTI, ng Dolly and other livelihood agencies. Bakit hindi makakaangat? Billions na ang binibigay. Bakit hindi pa rin makakaangat? Kasi pagkatapos ng grant, 
wala na, no sustain, wala nang sustainability. Dagdagan pa ng climate change, walang resilience. So what will happen to us? Ang ating proteksyon pang lipunan, sabi nga kanina ni 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 taga pangulo, ni chair na sino-sino ba? Uh, meron tayong dalawang uri ng social protection. We have contributory at non-contributory. Alam naman natin yan. Pagdating sa contributory, ito yung magtulong sa informal enterprises na maging resilient. Kasi kung sila ay may SSS, sila ang may feel health, sila ay may pag-ibig, pagdating ng mga sakuna, meron ka agad makatuwang. Pero ngayon po, noon successful na sawa, pero binawi dahil tinaasan po yung mga presyo. Ang ating health insurance ay napakataas na at sinama na ang general, ang informal sector sa direct contributory. E nakita namin sa datos ng World Bank, when, when, when you see Carl Chua was still in the World Bank, nabigyan kami na ang mga farmers are even earning an average of 48 pesos a day. So, nung ibabayad niyan? So, yun yung mga, yun yung mga dapat titingnan. Bakit tinaasan? So, yung mga tagumpay noon ng sektor ay biglang nabawi dahil hindi na maka-afford ang mga tao, lalo na ngayon itong pandemya. So, ang proposal po namin, bakit dadagdagan natin ng S from present to present and social and solidarity enterprises. Kasi po, ang social and solidarity enterprises ay nag-address po ng progressive formalization So, unti-unting i-formalize sila ng next year after na may grant ngayon sa livelihood, next year they can access already to credit. Meron na po tayong tagumpay along that line with the Banko Central ng Pilipinas. Meron ng auto-debit na saan ang mga manggagawa or ang mga informal sector, farmers, fisher folks na nasa rural areas, ay pwede nang mag-open ng account with only, 50 pe with only less than 100 pesos. Sana yan, tapos meron na silang uh, ATM, pwede na nilang gamitin, ma-establish na yung kanilang credit record. Yun yung napakahalaga. So, marami na along doon sa formalization, working with the various agencies, hindi kaya hinahanap ko saan kaya yung mga partners ko wala dito. Because doon sa formalization po, marami pong nagawa din ang mga ang ating pamahalaan. I'm thankful for that. Unti-unti, that's why ang tawag po namin ay progressive formalization. So back to the title, kung gagawin siyang present, then madre siguro natin ang ibang like formalization, like climate change, greening the enterprises. Kailangan ng greening the enterprises. The farmers do not know na by using mga chemicals na mga nito, fertilizer, sinisira nila ang kalikasan. They do not know about it. So maraming, maraming, maraming tagumpay or maraming bibit-bitin po yung unsolidarity. And even they are present in the 17 SDG pagdating ng ating, uh, ang, ng bansa natin na meron tayong mga commitments. They will address also the 17 SDGs, especially uh, decent work, at, uh, goal one, which is poverty, gender, and then decent work, and then social justice as well as representation. So yun po yung aming panawagan. Nasubmit na namin po kanina lang kasi ano, uh, and then I submitted also the previous position papers na on. At bago-bago ko tapusin po, isa po yung panawagan namin talaga na, which is affirmed already by the International Labor Conference General Conclusions last, last June, Dinefine na po ang, inform, ang, ang social and solidarity enterprise. So we have now the basis. Unlike the 18th Congress, hirap na hirap kami dahil wala pa kami yung basis. Anong, and kinibaw, then, anong kinibaw ng social solidarity okay. enterprise? Social, social enterprise. enterprises po, karamihan kasi nagkaroon na yan ang discussion sa 18th Congress. Hindi, hindi nila require yung kinatawag na insurances and other decent work. Addressing decent work deficits and OSH. Samantalang, pag tingnan natin ang poverty, it's multiple facets. Kailangan kasama dyan, kailangan nilang insurance, kailangan nilang occupational safety and health, etc. Now, because wala kami sa, sa statistics nga, wala kami sa definitions, wala kami sa pamahalaan, if you look at our OSH law, kaya we are calling even for amendment of that, along doon sa Macoy, sa lower house, kasi very punitive. So, sa si informal sector, that becomes a driver to informality. Kasi hindi naman namin kayang ma-afford. We just want to learn first. 
cultivate the culture of Osh. So dapat mga kasama ito dito sa sa ano sa present bill para hindi na maraming batas, isang batas ano, and then isa po na hindi nagawa. Nagutos po ang Senado uh, last year yata ang Committee on Labor nagutos ng magkaroon ng mag-establish ng National Registry System. Baka matalwangan po kami. We started already with that, establishing the registry system. Pero hindi namin kaya yung resources. I hope that Dolly will continue for that as well as NAPSI. Sila yung nasain. And then, ang isa pa po yung sa we need a framework. Dapat iisa lang po sa amin pagtingin. Iisa lang po sana yung framework natin ng livelihood. Kasi iba-iba eh. Uh, pag kami bumababa sa community, DEI has another program, DOLI has another program, saan ba ito tutungo? Iba-iba. So, as we go along, so, the other day lang, ha, nagpatawag kami ng interagency for our intervention sa Siargao on ODET, uh, ODET victims. Iba-iba po ang mga programa. So, ang hirap-hirap. So, hindi rin alam ng mga barangay captain sa so dudo project proposal. <laughs> Tapos isa rin po, ang pinaka ano, yung we work already before, yung tatlong committee na kasama mo rin, yung pag-address ng high cost of business permits. Kasi while go-negosyo is there, pag go-negosyo, ang na na nakakapasok lang doon, yung mga nakapagrehistro. But hindi dahil nga sa autonomous power ng LGU, taxation power nila. Hindi pare-parehas po. Kaya napakataas ng business permit and that becomes another driver to informality. So paano sila makapag-access sa credit, etc. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat, ma'am. Napakaganda nung inyong sinabi. At uh, hopefully you can join the TWG para sa pag-finalize. Yes, yes, I will say. Yung input nyo. Clearly, maganda yung karanasan nyo sa sector na ito. So tulungan nyo po kami. Lalo na sa definition. Opo. So, yung present, gusto niya gawing present. Yes, para ma-emphasize. Pero dalawa yung S. Dalawang S. Ayaw niyo ng present or, or present. Thank you, sir. Whatever, kahit present lang. Basta, the essence. Basta may extra na S. Yung, yung solidarity okay. in nature. It is yung social protection and decent work. Okay, ma'am. Sige po. Thank you. Sa so, Bureau of Treasury, Director Mariano, online. Director? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Hi. Good afternoon po. And the Honorable Members. Members. present uh, the bills. Yes, Mr. Sure. Chair. Um, we note that uh, there are uh, one, two, six bills, six ver version of the bills uh, addressing uh, poverty reduction through the promotion of social entrepreneurship. While we do, um, uh, while we do support the intent of the bill, we would just like to comment, Mr. Chair, on certain provisions particularly on the setup of um, several, oh, well, the setup of uh, Social Enterprise Development Fund. So this appears to sorry. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, this appears to be a common feature among uh, all of the bills, Mr. Chair, and we will submit our position paper. Uh, in general, uh, our comment is that uh, this fund uh, should be clarified as to what will be the nature of this fund, in particular because it seems to be funded out of the GAA or the General Appropriations Act. Uh, if, if so, it will not be in harmony, sir, with our uh, one fund concept, wherein we try to avoid uh, separate pockets of our cash resources. Um, further, Mr. Chair, um, I think it is in, ver in the version under Senate Bill 583, um, wherein there are other uh, funds that are supposed to be or proposed to be uh, set up, such as the Social Enterprise Recovery and Rehabilitation. In uh, um, similar our comment, uh, we propose that these be. Uh, Funded out of the GAA, but um, if we can explore that needs to be funded, or sorry, that there should not be a separate fund uh, source from the GAA, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any other comment? Is that it, uh, Director Mariano? You know what? Yes, that is all, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Thank you very much. We understand your your concern uh, in light of the general uh, one fund rule. Salamat po. We'll we'll take that under consideration and discussion. Uh, for DBM, uh, 
Director Baran is, is here online. Any comment, ma'am? Uh, yes, good afternoon again, Mr. Chair, and to the other honorable senators present in this meeting. We would like to express our concurrence with the BTR regarding the establishment of the fund. And also, sir, we recognize also that there are other proposed sources like voluntary contributions, grants, gifts, and both from local and foreign sources. So in budgeting concept, there are also different treatments for different kinds of collections or... Yeah. We understand, we so, understand. Medyo technical yan. So, pag-usapan natin yes, sa sir. TWG yung technicalities nung uh, ano yung how to structure the rules for the fund, etc. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, thank sir. You, thank thank you. You. Salamat po. Salamat po. Uh, last is uh, Chet, the Commissioner on Higher Education, uh, Sir Antonio Lopez. Uh, you're, you're free to comment also on the, not only on the present, but also on the SSF bill kasi kasama ho kayo doon. Uh, um, so, any comments on these bills, the SSF and the uh, present uh, bills, Mr. Lopez. Yeah, I'm uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and the members of the committee. And, and of course, also the presence of. Uh, of Patay na lang hu yung mga other computers. Maybe you can uh, uh, mute the other computers para hindi magka echo. Okay. 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 Uh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I'll maybe ask the other resource persons. Patay na muna natin yung sound. Okay. Yung, uh, Oh, can you, mute, can, mute can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Actually, it's the echo that's the problem. And the echo is okay. caused by having other computers on at the same uh, Having uh, the, the sound of the other computers yeah. on. So, kaya yeah. nakikusap yeah. kami na patayin muna or mute muna yung mga ibang computer. Go okay. ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you much, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Chair, the Technical Committee on Business and Entrepreneurship, of course, we'd have no objection in passing uh, SDF bill on uh, present, the present program. However, there are some comments and recommendations that we would like to air. Number one, of course, we'd like to inform everyone that we have a Bachelor of Science in Entrepreneurship. It has been there since 1997, and it was revised and updated uh, 2017. And that includes, of course, social entrepreneurship. Under the BS Entrepreneurship Program, uh, education institution can offer a special track or a major in social entrepreneurship or other areas such as agriculture, tourism, and other things that uh, needed actually needed by the industry. And second, of course, when we talk of uh, entrepreneurship, it is included in all disciplines under the general education. Um, it's a major elective under general education. We call it entrepreneurial mind. So business or non-business program will be also will have the option to offer entrepreneurial mind. The same thing also with the business administration program. We do have also a um, major elective on social entrepreneurship. The same thing with the BS entrepreneurship. A social entrepreneurship is a major core or professional core under the BS entrepreneurship program. Now, our... Uh, our comment or our recommendation, number one, has something to do with the laboratory, the business laboratory. Um, major concerns of uh, most higher education institutions is the business laboratory, where uh, ideas, business ideas are being nurtured. And of course, uh, they need mentors, coaches, and of course, in terms of the startup business. That includes, of course, the social enterprise development. Hopefully, um, the government or other government agency can help us actually put up a, a business laboratory. You can call it entrepreneurship laboratory or an innovation center or innovation laboratory. And this is open not only for students, but even for a marginalized sector who would like actually to put up their own business, to put up their own business. And secondly, has something to do with the faculty uh, capacity building. Uh, particularly the one who are going to handle or to teach uh, entrepreneurship, particularly social enterprise development. We need actually uh, the assistance of uh, professionals and probably also the government agency to help us actually uh, design a training program really for faculty or teaching or uh, teachers handling uh, social entrepreneurship. That's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Yung binabanggit niyo pong entrepreneurship lab, that's actually a lot of the functions of that, as you mentioned, or uh, 
enumerated are performed by the fa uh, fabrication lab of DTI, which is the earlier bill we discussed, yung SSF. So maybe the DTI and the CHED can uh, uh, discuss that. Or, or at least at the TWG, you can be present para uh, you can also uh, download that information sa ating mga uh, state universities and colleges. Uh, there's 108 of them and uh, I'm sure as part of their extension work of the uh, courses, especially in entrepreneurship, pwede nila i-offer ko yun. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Thank you, Renpo. Thank you. Okay, any other comments on the present bill before we wrap up our discussions? Para nanganak na nanganak to. Ah. <laughs> Ilan? Para ran. Sampang sampung last na nating resource person to. DOF, uh, Ms. Sara Conche wishes to be recognized. You're recognized, uh, Ms. Sara Conche. Where is she? Ms. Sara Conche, Department of Finance. Ah, yeah, go ahead. Good, good afternoon, Your Honor. Hello, good afternoon. Okay, yep. So, DOF, I see a nameplate saying Michael Aaron Gakutan. Are, are you the one speaking, sir? Please yes, turn on your monitor so we can uh, okay. see how good looking you are. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honors. And, yeah. uh, Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Afternoon. Go ahead, please. Uh, well, the Department of Finance uh, recognizes the good intent of the proposal. So far, Your Honor, our uh, comments will be limited to the proposed tax incentives provision found in the proposed measure, Your Honor. Uh, first one is the, the tax reform for acceleration and inclusion or the train law passed in 2017 already provided generous tax incentives relief for our individual taxpayers, uh, including single proprietors operating social enterprises. Uh, in addition, uh, the CREATE law, which was enacted in 2021, already provided uh, reductions in the income tax rates of uh, corporations from 30% to 25% and a lower rate of 20% for micro, small, and medium enterprises. Uh, CREATE rationalized the country's incentive system to be pro-business and pro-people. Uh, with this, Your Honor, we are the Department of Finance uh, does not support uh, the proposed tax incentives provisions. Uh, and a provision. In the, yes, Your Honor. Subject, however, Your Honor, to submission of the formal position paper uh, coming from the department. That would be all. Yeah, well, I understand what you're saying, uh, sir. No? Pero yung, as you said, uh, under train, which, which I also sponsored, and create, uh, I, we also... Uh, were not, was an author of that. Um, pero is there any incentive in CREATE for social enterprises? Is there a provision no. there for social enterprises? Parang wala eh. Aside from the wala. lowering of the corporate income tax. Will, will, uh, will, uh, will and, sorry. I'm sorry. Covered your honor. This, your your suggestion or your comment will be uh, addressed in the position paper of the, the department, your honor. Ah, sige, sige. Thank you. I, ano lang, kung meron man, i-alert nyo na lang kami. Alin yung mga pwedeng i-avail ng social enterprise dun sa create. Kasi to my knowledge, wala, wala yung ano eh. Walang ano. Talaga pang nego negosyante talaga yung create eh. Uh, aside from the lowering, ah, yung lowering, kapag ka small enterprise ka, then you have a, a more concessional uh, income tax uh, rate. No? So aside from that, kung meron man, at saka kung meron man sa batas, eh, i-alert nyo na lang kami para we can uh, harmonize with, with the philosophy of the DOF. Salamat, salamat po. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. Ito na daw yung last, sabi ni Comzec. BSP, uh, Ms. Melanie Cabotahe. Let's go ahead, ma'am. Gandang hapon po. I'm from the University of the Philippines Institute for Small Scale Industries. Ah, okay. Or UPISSI. The UPISSI strongly supports the passage of a law that promotes the growth and development of social enterprises in the Philippines. Social enterprises, in, con in contrast to regular businesses, engage with the poor in a transformational manner or in a way through uh, wealth distribution and value creation, as already mentioned by Yusek Lantayona and Dr. Dakanay. Based on a study published by the British Council, 
and the Philippine Social Enterprise Network, or FILSEN, in 2017, there were over 164,000 enterprises in the Philippine social enterprises that aim to provide jobs, reduce poverty, improve a local community, and empower marginalized groups. They work with and benefit the most vulnerable and marginalized sectors of our society. A 2015 study by the British Council highlighted the impact of social enterprises in the country in terms of job generation and women empowerment. However, the report also noted the weaknesses of social enterprises, such as lack of financing, pay in leadership and management positions being lower than in other sectors. And thus, the report recommended for governments, funders, social enterprises, and women's organizations to work together to realize the potential of social enterprises in the country. At the height of the pandemic, the Institute for Social Entrepreneurship in Asia, or ICEA, reported that 96% of social enterprises were affected by this health disaster and the ensuing restrictions imposed by the government. As the Philippine economy grad gradually eases up, social enterprises face the challenge of sustaining its service to marginalized groups while they also ensure their rec recovery at the same time. As such, the UPISSI welcomes the proposed Senate Bill 536 because it, it, it does not only recognize and support social enterprises, it also aims to strengthen this sector. The current draft of the bill is detailed and comprehensive. We take note of the key provisions of the bill that benefit social enterprises and their stakeholders. We support the provision of the bill for the National Present Program, which aims to promote and enable the creation of sustainable livelihoods in, in strategic economic subsectors and value chains, provide quality social and economic services to the poorest and most marginalized sector, and provide adequate support and incentives for social enterprises, among others. The bill also provides for hybrid financing scheme to help social enterprises access the kind of financial assistance appropriate to them. This is in recognition of the distinct nature of social enterprises. Iba po kasi sila sa regular businesses. Provo provisions of the bill dealing with hybrid financing to help social enterprises sustain and scale their operation and become financially sustainable include the following. Special credit windows with non-collateral loans and a guaranteed fund pool. We also upload... We also applaud that the bill also provides for the implementation of programs and incentives for the development of social enterprises, which are vital in developing the sector. Section 14 also states the UPISSI, uh, in coordination with the National Center for Social Enterprise Development, we take this opportunity to express our eagerness to contribute to SE development and openness to collaborate. To strengthen the effectiveness of the bill once enacted, here are some of our specific comments and recommendations. Under the Social Enterprise Development Council we rec section, we recommend that the bill explicitly mentions representatives from the youth, women, farmers, and indigenous peoples in the proposed measure, as these are the marginalized sectors that are us usually the intended beneficiaries of social enterprises. Under the section on the role of LGUs in SE development, we also recommend that the bill expound on the specific responsibilities of local government units in assisting and promoting social enterprises. Ano ba yung inexpect na trabaho natin from LGUs? Aside from in social insurance, we also recommend for the bill to allocate funds for the Emergency and Reco Recovery Fund for Social Enterprises, which will provide assistance so to social enterprises in times of disasters, such as typhoons, earthquake, pandemic, etc. Under the Social Entrepreneurship Education Schools uh, provision, to make it more meaningful, we recommend for this bill to allocate funds for the development of teaching materials and modules related to social entrepreneurship. In concluding this statement, the UPISSI reiterates the critical role of social enterprises in poverty reduction and in the overall development of this country. 
As such, we recommend the passage of a law that recognizes social enterprises and promotes their growth and development. Maraming salamat po. Thank you much, ma'am. Uh, yeah, please participate sa TWG. Tsaka, can we, if, if it's not proprietary, can we get a copy of the British Council study? Uh, yes po. Uh, salamat, salamat. Okay, we have, uh, sabi ni Comsec, may dalawa pa daw na kailangan tawagin. So for BSP, uh, physically present is Maria Cynthia Season. Ma'am, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Padilla, and honorable, honorable members of the committee, uh, we would like to put on record that the BSP supports the objectives of the present bills because these are also in line with the financial inclusion and sustainability objectives of the BSP. Um, since we just received the invitation yesterday, we would like to request for some time for us to provide our comments. But uh, we also would like to um, request the legislators to also be mindful of the existing laws which already require banks to um, grant credit. So there are already other laws which mandate banks to grant credit to certain sectors. Um, it was already mentioned earlier, the DA said that there is already the Agriculture, Fisheries, and Rural Development Financing Act, that's 25%. The Innovation Credit Act, um, 4%. There are ongoing discussions, which amend the MSME rules, that's 10%. And if we add on the 10% under the present bills, this will already amount to almost half. Of a bank's um, portfolio. Thank <laughs> you. Be realistic, you know. um, what if we just include them among the sectors in the increase in the existing percentage, so which is required by law? Meaning, uh, hindi natin dinagdagan yung porcento, pero dinagdagan natin yung pwedeng mabigyan sa loob ng porcento yun. Perhaps that may be considered. Mr. Yeah, Chair. okay. So, yeah, give us your comment on that suggestion. That way, I, I know I've spoken to a lot of banks and there's there's a lot of difficulty talaga in lending to a lot of these people. So, uh, pero gusto natin uh, maging uh, inclusive naman. So, if they cannot lend to this sector, why not this sector, di ba? Na para yung disadvantage. Thank you. For PNOC, we have Professor Jesus Posadas. Uh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair and your honors present. PNOC supports social entrepreneurship in addressing poverty among the basic sectors in Philippine society as envisioned under Senate Bill 536 on social enterprises. Our view on PNOC's contribution to the Social Enterprise Guarantee Fund, that it be taken from PNOC's yearly substantive dividends remittance at 50% income, income net of taxes to the National Treasury under the dividends law. Also considering that PNOC already implements its own CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility Programs, in the communities where PNOC Batangas Energy Supply Base and PNOC Bataan Industrial Park operates. This is also in consideration of the provision under RA 7656 or GOCC Dividends Law that the GOCC's capacity to fulfill its particular and focused public interest mandate need not be inadvertently impaired to an unsustainable level on account of its compliance to the said law. This is particularly true in the case of PNOC, despite its, operate, its corporate operating budget funding being completely internally generated, has its corporate operating budget well deliberated and overseen by both houses of Congress. After passing the BM's close vetting and inclusion in an alignment with the national expenditure program. Also, on the proposed section 23 of the Social Enterprise Guarantee Fund pool, that we recommend it should be calibrated and adjusted to actual loan payment defaults incurred and not a continuing fund buildup from an automatic annual budget surplus remittances, irrespective of actual historical loan payment defaults. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Uh, Mr. Posadas, we'll take that into account uh, when we finalize the consolidated version. Salamat po. Uh, kung wala na pong uh, comments on the present bill, we'll suspend consideration of these measures and refer it to a technical working group to improve uh, the bill. Uh, exacto, 3 o'clock na ho. So uh, let's take a 10-minute or 5 or 10-minute health break. We'll see you here at 10 minutes after 3, if that's all right, to uh, take a break, stretch your legs, uh, Relieve yourselves. Uh
uh, health break. Uh, so see you, see you in 10 minutes, uh, your honors.
tapos na ho tayo sa SSF and sa present uh, bills. Uh, dito naman ho tayo sa third group or third uh, uh, category. This is the Protected Geographical Indications Act or Senate Bill 1868. Ito po ay tutulong po sa ating mga local producers kasi nilalagay po yung kanilang geographic indication. Yun po yung nag identify sa isang good or product na uh, nagagaling sa isang teritoryo. So, ginagawa na po ito sa ibang bansa at uh, ito'y palagi ko makakatulong sa ating mga producers uh, in the long run. No? Kasi once na-identify sila na ganito, uh, galing sila dito may, in, in a sense, may quality assurance in a way later on. Well, that's not, that's not guaranteed, no? pero uh, it, it's one of the possible uh, outcomes. So for this, we'll, uh, of course, we'll, we'll ask for DTI's opinion later. Pero yung IPO Phil, ho, uh, Intellectual Property Office uh, Director Jesus Antonio Ross, Director. San Jose Good afternoon, director. Uh, yeah, Mr. Afternoon, ho, director. Uh, your comments, please, on the geograph Protected Geographical uh, Indications uh, Act. Oh. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, the Honorable Senator Robin, other honorable members of uh, this committee and our dear resource persons, good afternoon. Uh, IPO Phil fully supports this proposed uh, legislation because it will protect, promote, preserve the cultural heritage and other practices of our indigenous cultural communities and other local uh, communities. It will also promote local products based on the origin and their known quality, characteristic, and reputation. It also promises to increase productivity and financial stability of our local producers, as shown in other uh, examples in uh, foreign markets. And on the part of the consumers, this will also provide safeguards and guarantees uh, to our uh, consuming public. But to allow us uh, to further review the bill, uh, Mr. Chair, may we respectfully request that we be given until uh, next week to submit our position paper. But we are ready to entertain uh, some questions for clarification. Thank you very Mr. much, uh, Director Ross. Uh, question is how specific do we get dito sa geographical indication? How, how do we indicate the town the, or just the country of origin? No? Uh, thank you. Uh, that's a very interesting question, Mr. Chair. Uh, actually, geographical indication indeed can refer to a very small territory or area. It can refer to a bigger region, for example, Bicol. It can refer to a very small community like, like for example, uh, Lake Cebu, uh, where there is the concentration of our Tibuli dream weavers. In some cases, like um, um, Colombia, they use the country name to refer to their geographical indication for coffee, but actually it's not the entire Colombia, but they, the name has that reputation, but there's only certain uh, in our, the, comparable to the Philippines, maybe few provinces. Yes. There may cases na a product of one province is sent to another province, and that province uh, where it is sent to. Clinically, nila na product nila yon. So, mm -hmm. medyo nagkakaroon ng konting mm -hmm. issue doon. Uh, but, yeah. uh, but I see the larger import of this bill, no? And definitely, we have to clear that up siguro when in the final version kung how specific do we have to be and do we ho always have to indicate. Siyempre, siguro, we have always have to indicate the country, di ba, Philippines. Kasi kung nilagay mo lang Lake Cebu, eh, sa mga hindi taga rito, di naman nila alam mm -hmm. sa yung Lake Cebu, di ba? So, yung mga ganong, ganong issue ba? But definitely, we welcome your submission uh, and then you uh, and take your time and submit that in next week, anytime next week. Thank so you, League of Provinces, uh, Ms. Sanchez, Director Sanchez, are you online, ma'am? Or log out na siya? Ah, nag log out na yata si Ms. Sanchez. So DTI will ask, uh, Yusek, andyan pa ba? Mulis na? Well, anyway, let's ask, uh, Komsek, hindi na lang natin ang position in writing yung uh, DTI for this. So that's it. Uh, anyone want to comment on the bill on, on uh, geographic indications? Uh, we'll be happy to move on to the next uh, bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Salamat, uh, Director Ross. So we'll go to the uh, fourth set of bills. This is the 
Domestic Bidders Preference Act, Senate Bill 319. This uh, actually may meron na yung provisions sa GAA uh, and under the, which are uh, consistent dito sa 9184 or the Government Procurement Reform Act uh, regarding preference, especially for uh, bidding for goods and services. No, uh, We also put it in the Bayanihan Tulo a few years ago during the pandemic para matulungan yung ating mga domestic producers uh, sa pagbili ng gamot, etc., masks, etc. Uh, so now we, we are looking to institute, institutionalize uh, some of these practices and processes. No? So can we hear from the DBM, uh, Director Baran? This is online, I think. Uh, Director Baran? Uh Good afternoon again, Mr. Chair. Yes, good afternoon again. Any comment on the Domestic Bidders uh, uh, Preference Act? Sir, I think we have a representative from the GPP DTS. Ah, GPP, yes, I see yes. Mr. Raj Baring. Barong? Raj. Baring? What's that? I don't understand your writing. Mr. Pasensya na kayo, di ko maintindihan yung sulat ng staff ko. Baring, Mr. Raj Baring, kung nagkamali ako, Mr. Raj Barong, Baring. Are you here, sir? Hi, um, good good afternoon, Your Honor. Ah, yes, yes. Taga GPPB ko kayo? Yes, po, sir. Is Annie Almojeda. Yes, go ahead, yes, ma'am. Um, regarding po sa bill, we are preparing our comment on that. So, Sige, we understand ho, kasi medyo technical ho ito eh. Uh, yes, po. So, yeah, yeah, sige, we'll, we'll await your submission ho. Thank you, po. Uh, uh, DTI, wala na. Andito pa ba si Director Salonga? Ayan, yeah, Director, please go ahead, ma'am. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and Senator Padilla. Of course, I uh, would like to express DTI's strong support for the passage of this bill and that um, may we also be given until... Uh, next week to be able to complete our position paper and really commend uh, this kind of initiative. Thank you, sir. Sige po, Director Salonga. Uh, Division Chief Cheryl Santos, also DTI. Care to add? Di na siguro, no? Kasi magsasabit naman kayo, mag-usap kayo. Name, no? Sige, sige po. Thank you. Attorney Liave from uh, DOTR, from the Legal Service. Are you here, sir? Online? Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Hi, good afternoon, ho, Attorney. Yes, sir. Good Comment afternoon. on the domestic bidder's preference, ho? Uh, yes, uh, we would like to express our general uh, support for the bill, and we will be uh, submitting our position paper uh, by next week, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Salamat. Director Sullivan, Thank you very much, from sir. DepEd. Director Sullivan, are you online, sir? Uh, if not, uh, submit na lang ng position paper, please. Uh, DOJ, Attorney Annalisa Manito, State Council. Ma'am? Any yes. comment po sa domestic bidders? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and to the distinguished members of the committee. The Department of Justice fully supports the passage of Senate Bill Number 319, which seeks to institutionalize the certification program of domestic bidders and which encourages local participation in the procurement process by providing preference to products made in or sourced from the Philippines. The bill is consistent with Section 12, Article 12 of the Constitution, which declares that the state shall promote the preferential use of Filipino labor, domestic materials, and locally produced goods and adopt measures that help make them competitive. Uh, the DOJ will submit its official position paper by next week. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat po, Attorney. Uh, Attorney Ryan Perez of the BOI. BOI's Board of Investment, no? Uh, Attorney Ryan Perez from the Legal and Investment Compliance. Are you online, sir? Again, we ask the ComSec and the staff to notify them so they're... Uh, wala na daw. Okay. Hingin na lang tayo ng ano. Sayang. Importante yung BOI. So, do natin ma-interface yung uh, production side and incentive side. Eh. So, dito sana. So we can incentivize our local producers. Philippine Contractors Accreditation Board, Herbert Machenzo, Executive Director, online. Uh, Good Good Director Machenzo, sir. 
Good afternoon, Senator Angara and Senator Padilla. Uh, on behalf of BCAP, sir, we will be submitting our position paper po, but we fully support the the bill. Salamat po. Thank you, Director Matienzo. Uh, PCC, this is the Philippine Competition Commission. Research Officer Ramon Sawit. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. And afternoon. our dear Senators, uh, the PCC supports the objective of the measure and we will submit our position paper to the same. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you. Uh, Coalition of Philippine Manufacturers of PPE, Ms. Marites Oxon Agoncillo. Are you online, ma'am? Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Miss uh, uh, Oxon uh, Gonzilio, go ahead. From the Coalition of Philippine Manufacturers. Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. I hope I can. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm the Confederation of Wearables Exporters, the uh, Executive Director. Uh, uh, for this, we have not. Uh, we are fine tuning our position paper, but I would like to give the floor to the Executive Director of our. Affiliate Association, CPMP, the Conf Coalition of Philippine Manufacturers of PPE, Ms. Rosette Carillo, to just give a quick purview of where our position stands. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Rosette. Thank you. Magandang uh, hapon po sa lahat. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead po, Director. Uh, yeah. First of all po, uh, like what uh, our colleague Marites Oxon mentioned, uh, we support the uh, Senate Bill 319. Uh, at, and we will submit our position paper next week. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Chair, we would just like to provide you some comments based on our experience on using the DOBIT uh, process. Yes, please. Uh, yes, please. Okay. Nagpapasalamat uh, po kami sa Senate Bill 319. With your permission po, nice uh, lang po namin sana i-share yung experience namin, yung mga agam-agam namin as far as the DOBIT uh, certification is concerned, no? Uh, in fact, we support this very much because it's aligned to the activities of CONWEP and CPMP uh, with regards to other laws of the of the land, like the RA-9242 in Philippine Tropical Fabric Law, which supports the use of local fiber for government offices uniform. No, uh, But our concern, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, is yung karanasan namin in presenting the, the DOE bid, uh, specifically in government bids for the PPE. Uh, of course, there was the RA-11494, which really uh, respected the DOE bid. Pero, sir, I don't know kung ito po pa ang lugar to discuss this, but we just like to express na napakaganda po ng SB319 promoting domestic bidders and giving them preferences. But the challenge po talaga is on the procurement of the government agencies and the GOCCs. Uh, hindi ko pa alam kung ito po ay would this require an amendment on the part of the RA-9184, yung Government Procurement Act, no? Uh, pang experience po namin kasi is that we are all qualified, we go by the standards, pero ang kalaban po namin is that the design of the bid of the, of the government agencies always look at the lowest calculated bid. No? In our experience na naranasan po namin na with the unscrupulous traders and importers, pumapasok po sila uh, and they can easily dump their products, slow their prices, crash down their prices just to be able to enter the bid. Uh, Yun po ang mga concern namin because we think and we highly recommend sana ang ang, 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 ang kasama po sana sa SB319 is really promoting the use and support for the local industries. Ang pinaka-importante dyan is to emphasize the local value uh, component. no So as the, as the bill recommend, uh, supports the use of labor, sana po sa pag-procure din, uh, they give a value to the local value added in terms of the local labor use, especially in retain, retainment of jobs, no, in domestic materials use, yung, the portion of giving it um, a credit po in terms of points on the locally produced. At uh, in the GPRC and the process of the Government Procurement Act, meron po sinang tinatawag na highest rated bid, which they only use for consulting services. Sana po instead of just going for the lowest calculated bid, uh, because Na, nasabi ko na po namin yon na meron mga unscrupulous traders, importers who come in and just dump the prices. Sana po may iba pong konsiderasyon at may isa batas. Kasi ang una-una po namin experience, we were producing PPE at the height of the, the, the pandemic. Sinabi kami ng PSDB, there is no local law that requires them to purchase locally. So ang kompetensya po namin, even with the DOBID, is the influx of importers and traders. 
Uh, yun lang po, sana po mabigyan niyo po ng pansin, napakaganda po ng batas. Uh, sana po lagyan po natin ng konting tagat uh, para po patulungan natin ang totoong uh, nagbibigay ng trabaho, nagbibigay po ng ng development locally. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Director Carillo. That's a good point. Ah. Uh, we're consistent naman with the Government Procurement Act as long as I think, is it 15% variance? There's a, so kahit hindi ikaw yung lowest, basta if you're not lower than 15% or not more than 15% uh, difference from that uh, lowest bidder, then parang halos tabla na yung domestic uh, producer. So may palugit ng konti for our domestic producers. But siguro we cannot uh, go beyond that anymore because uh, yun, we might, uh, uh, baka mahirapan tayo doon. Uh, and there yeah, may Mr. also be uh, Mr. Chair, uh, is there a way that we can still work with the technical working group? Because if the yes, 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 please, please, please be a yeah. part of that. Because so we, based, your your, your based, experience uh, will be very valuable. Oh. Yeah, based on our experience, the fifteen percent did not did not do us justice. Uh, that's what we're trying to say. Ah, okay, uh, okay. Yes, because if you uh, and if if you uh, if the government is consistent with its direction to provide jobs, which we did in uh, 2020, 2021, we poured in investment, we uh, we retained jobs, but at the end of the day, the government did not, uh, uh, you know, did not acknowledge our efforts and bought from the locally um, local manufacturers because uh, we are already stating it clearly that the 15% provision in the current law was not enough and it was the way for us to be marginalized out of the the loop. So there should be other uh, there should be other considerations, and we would like to work this closely with the TWG. Uh, uh, again, as my uh, colleague has supported, um, uh, has um, discussed earlier, uh, the Senate Bill T19 is very very good. We support this, but uh, it needs a lot of fine tuning. And if uh, the purpose of the government is really to provide jobs for local manufacturers. Uh, to support um, local labor, to support locally produced materials, then we would like to work closely with the Senate and, and the TWG for this. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, Ms. Hoxana Concilian, Director Carilla, you're invited to participate and share your experience, especially with that 15% uh, variance as provided. We may need to, we may or may not need to amend uh, the government procurement law if necessary, but we'll also need to get the GPPB's uh, technical expertise as the government agency tasked with implementing that law. Thank you. So, uh, okay, I think that's the last. Any other one, any other resource person who wishes to comment on the domestic bidders? If not, uh, we can close that and move on to the next. We'll refer this and the geographical indications bill to ATWG. Dito na po tayo sa second to the last group of bills. Yung quality standards, there are three bills here. Per, two pertain to infrastructure, uh, Senate Bill 628, Senate Bill 1127, and Senate Bill 793. So those 628 and 793 talk about infrastructure, and Senate Bill 1127 talks about uh, accreditation in general of uh, products. So can we... Wow, kapal nito. <laughs> kapal nung resource persons. Uh, sige. So let's try to keep uh, the interventions brief kasi wala namang... Ano to? And then, mag, I will take them up together. Uh -oh. So sige po. Uh, DTI, uh, Bureau of Philippine Standards. We have Director Manfoste along with Staff Engineer Molina and Engineer Dainla. DTI, yeah. Direct, Assistant Director Manfoste. There's, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, please. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Senators. Afternoon, Your Honors. Uh, actually, the Bureau of Philippine Standards, uh, and a part of the Department of Trade and Industry, um, really uh, appreciates the effort in coming up with the bill. Nagpapasalamat po tayo sa ating butihing Senator sa pagkilala niya, sa pamantayan at kalidad bilang konsepto ng uh, ating ekosistem. At of course, nagpapasalamat din po tayo sa ating iniidulong, Senator Padilla, 
sa pag-support na po dito sa effort na ito dito, uh, na binalangkas at uh, contain in this bill. Uh, all all uh, support po ang Bureau of Philippine Standards and uh, we are, ano, we are uh, coming up with our own uh, uh, position on this and we will be sending this uh, in the days to come. Thank you, thank you. Kita nyo man yung suit ni Senator Padilla, walang made in, uh, walang imported doon dyan sa suit niya. Pati yung, ano niya, undershirt. Eh, galing po sa, made in local the Philippines. Fabric po. Ganun ka, nationalist ko si Senator Robin. Maraming salamat po, sir. Uh, sa Philippine Accreditations Bureau, PAB, Director James Impeño, Assistant Director Hernan Dionisio, Division Chief Juanita Carpio, Senior Trade Industry Development Specialist, Japet Celis. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Mr. Chair Director, and please. Senators. Uh, we strongly support the approval of the MQI bill because we believe that MQI is about building a system of trust and promoting a culture of quality, safety, and uh, sustainability. If you look around, everything we see uh, depend on MQI. All products and services rely on MQI services. MQI uh, services. However, there are currently some issues and challenges related to national quality infrastructure. So, these are, uh, for example, the current quality programs and policies are fragmented. There is a need to harmonize and institutionalize effective cooperation and coordination among the MQI institutions. There are overlapping MQI functions among agencies on standardization and accreditation. So the creation of a National Quality Infrastructure Coordinating Council, which is the focus of this bill, will serve as an oversight group governing the effective delivery of NQI services. And this will address the current issues related to NQI. And Mr. Chair, there are minor um, comments that we want to discuss later on later with the technical working group, but we also believe that a separate bill on standardization, another, a separate bill also on accreditation and metrology should be pursued in order to achieve the objectives of the NQI. SBN 628 uh, uh, will serve as the umbrella law. Ayun uh, lamang po. Salamat, Director. Each we'd like to acknowledge also the role of uh, DTI ASEC, Jean Pacheco in the crafting of the bill. Salamat sa tulong niya. Uh, thank you. Next, we have uh, the Competitiveness Bureau, Ms. Cheryl Santos, Division Chief, and Ms. Winalyn Amaka, Senior Specialist. Andito pa ba sila? Kung wala na, they will just get a, ano, also exporting, export, lahat to DTI eh, Export Marketing Bureau. Siguro di na kailangan isa-isahin to. Ano? Unless they want to speak uh, and, and express and, and May dadagdag na lang sila. Ms. Gino Il Mr. Gino Ilano, Assistant Director. Ms. Romina Blaser, Trade Industry Development Specialist, Board of Investments, Attorney Ryan Perez. Mr. Kenneth Co, Acting Division Chief Administrator. Uh, Regional Operations Group, Yusek Lantayona. OIC Director, Emma Susano. Deputy, what's DC? Deputy Chief? What about DC? DC Susan Salonga, DC Cynthia de la Cruz from the Bureau of MSME De Development. Is there any one of these individuals may gusto bang magkomento o magdagdag dun sa nasabi na po ng taga DTI? Uh, we'll give you a chance now. Huh? Ah, I see. So, wala na. Di ko na to. Okay. So, Anti-Red Tape Authority. Again, we have uh, Mr. Kilala, U USA, USA Kilala, and Admin Officer John Benedicto. We'll give the floor, sir, sa Arta. Yeah, thank you, Senator. May I be allowed to read uh, what uh, our team prepared? Apo, apo, apo. Well, generally, we would like to uh, thank for the inclusion of Arta in this particular proposal. We support this measure and believe that the establishment of a national accreditation policy will enhance the ease of doing business and compliance to international standards for Philippine products and services. It is suggested to harmonize with the proposed bills 
on the establishment of the national quality infrastructure policy. We note that this is in alignment with a strategy under Chapter 5, which states promote trade and investment of the Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028 on enhancing the NQI system in the country, particularly to harmonize the country's standards, technical regulations, metrology, accreditation, and conformity regulations and assessment, procedures, packaging, and even labeling to be at par with international standards. ARTA is fully supported or supportive on the promotion of trade and investment in the country as we pursue our EODB initiatives in trade facilitation, like, for example, the trade net. On the matter of accreditation established in Section 4, we note that the Philippine Accreditation Bureau under the DTI currently functions as the national accreditation body pursuant to EO number 802 series of 2009. It is suggested that this section clearly indicate that the mandate and functions of DTI PAB shall be transferred to the Philippine Accreditation Authority if necessary. While this has been mentioned in Section 16, transitory provision, said arrangement shall be mentioned in the earlier parts of the bill to recognize that an existing government entity is already doing the mandate and will be strengthened through the creation of the PAA. On the provision on the development of effective application of accreditation shall be an ongoing concern of the authority. It is suggested that this provision be clearer and more specific to identify the role of the PAA should take in addressing such concern. On the role of ARTA, we extend our appreciation in recognizing RA 11032 and ARTA as the competent law and government entity in assisting the said objective, pursuant to our mandate to assist in streamlining government processes and procedures, the ARTA may support in improving the current accreditation process in the country. The rest, your honors, might be addressed during the TWG and uh, generally, we're here to uh, express our full support to this proposed bill. Thank you, Your Honor. Salamat, uh, Yusa Kilala. Uh, may we now call on Mr. Ruma Baramaya from UNIDO. UNIDO is United Nations Industrial, Industrial Development Organization. Mr. Baran, are you here? Online? In print. Hello. Sino pa pwede? Next na lang, next. We have Angelica Santos from LPP. Oh, uh, offline na, di ba? LPP. Opo. Kanina pang offline. Oh, uh, we have from Ateneo Center, Anna Tan. Yeah, Ms. Tan, are you here? From the Ateneo Center. Ms. Tan? Oh. Naglagaw. Naglagaw. <laughs> we have from DOTR, Attorney Liave. Attorney Liave, he commented earlier, is he still online? Tony Liave, any comments? Yes. Uh, yes, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Apologies uh, for the... Yeah, uh, we manifest our support for the bill and we will submit our uh, position paper on it by next week. Thank you. Sige po. Salamat po. And lastly, we are from the OST, Dr. Zaray Ang. Dr. Ang, are you here? Dr. Ang, yes, online. Sir, I have no further comments, sir. Okay. Uh, you will submit a paper? Uh, on behalf of the DOST, sir. Ah, magsasubmit na lang ko kayo? Apa. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ang. So, any other comments on this set of bills? Uh, Senate Bill 628, 793, on the quality infrastructure development, and Senate Bill 1127, Philippine Accreditation Act, authored by Senator Mark Villar and Senator... Jingoy authored Senate Bill 793, and this representation authored Senate Bill 628. Any other comments? So we'll refer that to a TWG. Uh, so last na po yung Senate Bill number 90. This is the Export and Investments Development Act, or EIDA, ADA. Meron na huta yung RA 7844, pero 1994 pa huto. So uh, gusto nating Marami na po nangyari mula noong 1994 at uh, the world is uh, smaller in a sense, no? Uh, but more competition for our producers and exporters. So we'll hear from DTIMB, Assistant Director Gino Liano. 
Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Um, good afternoon. We'd like to express our gratitude for your um, support in uh, drafting this bill and to Senator Robin for gracing us this afternoon. Um, we, just, we will be submitting our official position paper, but we'd like to highlight two things under ADA. So number one is uh, we'd like to highlight the creation of an export financing institution. This is something that will um, act as an insurance to our exporters who would not be able to um, suffice to the concerns of their exportation. So for instance, magka problema sila in the process of uh, payment with their buyers, the, the export financing institution can cover that as, a, as an insurance system or a mechanism to support and help them continue their business because most of our exporters, um, pag naloko na sila po in terms of the payment, um, their businesses would usually stop. So they need some sort of a continuing fund. And then second po is we'd like to highlight as well um, those that are not part of um, the ADA, which is on non-registrant exporters under CREATE because under CREATE, um, it was mentioned that um, the incentives will be extended to those that are registered under our IPAs. And um, currently, we have exporters that are regist <clears throat> registered under field export and EMB. They are usually the small and medium enterprises that cannot comply to the volume requirement. And um, they are currently exporting through a consolidator. So for instance, if an exporter is unable to comply to the certification requirement of a certain market, the consolidator would have that certification and they'll be the one to lend the certification to this uh, exporter. So these are the two things we'd like to highlight, Mr. Chair. The incentives yung consolidator? Um, they were not any more part of the incentives under okay. CREATE. Okay. Sige. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you, Mr. Director Liano. BOI, Attorney Ryan Perez. Planet, can you uh, PSA, Julieta Soliven, any comment? DOST? Dr. Ang, I think you'll just submit, no? NEDA, Mr. Bien Ganapin, Director Ganapin. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, Good sir. afternoon, Hello. your honors. Um, just to um, um, state quickly our support to the, the bill. It's very timely and uh, it's, a, it's a welcome development. In fact, uh, your honors, uh, we note that the objective of this bill uh, is aligned with the goals of the PDP, especially in transforming trade and investments. Um, uh, for the, the the said bill, will provide for some uh, for some of the strategies identified in the PDP that will sustain and strengthen the global position of Philippine exports. And uh, we also note uh, we would like to note, Your Honors, that the amended key operating principles, especially on Section Three of the bill affirm the main strategies for the export sector as uh, identified uh, in, in the PDP. We have the, the details of these uh, comments, Your Honor, we, we will be submitting to you and uh, to this committee. Uh, but we, we would also like to, to note here the importance of uh, the data in informing policy interventions as uh, is highlighted as well, uh, which we, we, we are truly uh, in, in support of. Also, Your Honor, some provisions of, of, of the bill uh, would already institutionalize some of the strategies in the, in the plan or in the PDP, particularly those related to resolving key constraints to export competitiveness. So this would include, uh, Your Honors, the establishment of export trade complaints desk under Section 16. Uh, this will address issues and grievances related to export transactions and the creation of an export green lane facility under Section 20 uh, that will expedite government procedures and reduce the costs for uh, exporters. Thank you, Your Honors. Salamat ang marami, Director Ganapin. Appreciate the support and uh, any inputs you may have on the bill. The bill. So DA, Dr. Soler, Supervising Meat Control Officer. Sir, wala na siya. Wala na po. I will just ask uh, Komsek. Ingin lang tayo ng mga written uh, comments, please. DFA, Ms. Jorlin Espiritu. She's online, sir. Ah, you're online, Mrs. Spirito. Uh, 
Ano, wala na. Dole, Director Patri Wiranan from the Bureau of Local Employment. Director Patri Wiranan. Ano po? DBM, Attorney Baraan. Any comments on the Export and Investments Development Act? None at the moment, sir, just in okay. case you will submit our position paper. Sige po. Thank you, Director. <laughs> Attorney Jorgeno Sulit from the GOCC. Are you here, sir? Mr. Sulit? Attorney Sulit? Online. <laughs> okay. Ah, yes, yes. Hello. Oh, si ito. Kilala ko to. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes, Attorney Santos. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Kumusta yes. po? Kumusta po? Uh, <laughs> kumusta, sir? Oh. Uh, si, ano pala, si Senator Agarro was my classmate at the UP College. Classic naman. Classmate kami niya. Senator Agarro uh, graduated the uh, top 15 of the uh, graduating batch. Uh, he was also our class president in fourth year. Uh, he was a member of the student editorial board of the Philippine Law Journal. Teka, medyo irrelevant na yun. <laughs> <laughs> Information na yan. Oy, uh, ngayon lang kami sa senator. Uh, 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 this is the first time to be council president sa law student government. So, go ahead, Attorney uh, uh, Santos. Please. Sabi pala kami, Sir Senator, that uh, we will be submitting our position paper on the uh, Senate Bill number 90 uh, within uh, 10 days. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, ho. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mas mahaba thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sabi ni Ator, sabi ni Senator Robin, mahaba na yung introduction. Magsa, magsasapit lang pala kayo. <laughs> thank you, but thank you. Thank you for being present. Uh, alam mo natin, eh, magtatatlong oras na po itong hearing natin. Salamat po, salamat. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tol. Sa Export Development Council, we have Ms. Elsa de La Paz Valenzuela. Are you here, ma'am? Online, online. Si Ma'am uh, De La Paz, Valenzuela. Are you still online, uh, Ma'am? Kung wala na po, hingi na lang tayo ng uh, written uh, submission. Sa DFA ho, do we have Director Anthony Aguirre? Parang kilala ko rin to. Ah. Director Aguirre, are you online, sir? Lana, sige, submit na lang ho. I think uh, people are... Uh, Attention span has straight. Ayan, si Director. Hi, Anthony. Kamusta, Director? Hi, hi. Uh, Any hi, comment sir. on the Export uh, and Investments Development Act, sir? Ah, yes, uh, of course, the DFA uh, supports the, the, the bill. And um, uh, in the Foreign Service, we're always uh, ready to upgrade our capacities. Of course, with the support of the Senate. Hopefully, we get more support uh, uh, from the legislative department uh, so that we can upgrade our um, capability to promote uh, exports of Philippine goods and services abroad. Okay. Uh, and uh, our other comments, uh, Your Honor, I will just uh, submit a written comment to the, the other. Ah, Sigipo. Sigipo, Director, thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate your uh, presence and support. Uh, Komsek, any other? Sen Robin, baka may kasigundi. Magano tayo, magtatapos any any other resource persons any other comments from the body before we adjourn again we'll refer it to a technical working group for uh further refinement of the various measures again thank you thank you Hello, po sir. Uh, sa salamat sa mga... yes sino po yun? Uh, hello, sir. Magandang hapon po. Si Celia Ilumbo po ito. Ako po yung nag-represent ngayon ng UNIDO, the United Nations ah, yes, yes, Industrial ahead, Development please, yeah. Organization. Uh, for some reason, we're not able to um, access the, the, the audio, the video. So oh, we well. wanted to sign up, present a material, uh, but just to express the, in, the interest of the UNIDO, we are definitely in support of this particular bill. Uh, um, it you. is in aid of what we find to be the needs of the country in terms of our competitiveness goals. And if you, if we could please sign up, present, but I cannot seem to um, make my video work. Okay. Have you given a copy? Is it to possible the in your end? Maybe they can put it. Uh, well, there. Oh, One of our my uh, colleague is actually sharing it. Um, yeah, no. Yes, we see it. We see it, ma'am. Well, thank you very much. In fact, our uh, industrial thank development you, thank you, thank officer. You, thank you, thank you. See, Mr. Nima Baramalian is actually connected right now. He is in Vienna at the moment. 
he is um well he's still driving and so he's asked me to make the initial presentation on his behalf um but we wanted to first of all express our gratitude for inviting the unido to present its insights and its um what has been born of its experience in its global work on the quality infrastructure um so if I may address, yes, just very, very briefly, UNIDO was a center for industrial development created within the Department of Economic and Social Enterprise by the Economic and Social Council. In November 66, UNGA resolution established the UNIDO as an autonomous body within the United Nations to promote and accelerate the industrialization of the developing countries. And this, is, this resulted in 1985 with UNIDO becoming a specialized agency of the United Nations. So um, it is therefore an autonomous organization with 170 member states, its own policy making organs, its own executive director or head rather, um, its own budget with assessed contributions and own mandate and strategic framework. Jess? So the UNIDO constitution or the mandate states that we shall apply this, we shall play the central coordinating role in the field of industrial development, assisting developing countries in the promotion and acceleration of the industrialization. We deepen our commitment toward achieving inclusive and sustainable industrial development and we reaffirm the unique mandate of UNIDO in supporting our countries in achieving this role. Public and private sector increasingly need reputable evidence that their products and services meet regulatory, technical, and other requirements. This is necessary to successfully access the global marketplace and or meet local technical requirements, regulatory requirements, including those intended to protect human, animal, or plant life and health. There is therefore a corresponding drive to create a more robust, adaptive, cost-effective, user-friendly, and sustainable quality infrastructure system that provides access to a proper standardization, metrology accreditation, and conformity assessment and market surveillance capability and capacity, along with attendant education and promotion programs. An appropriate quality infrastructure system can therefore assist governments and enterprises in managing their quality competitiveness and regulatory system. So, in numerous cases, we have found that the quality infrastructure is developed without coordination in response to often unforeseen needs of the economy, society, and the environment. So this led to the, revol the evolution of quality infrastructure systems in a reactive, fragmented, and very dysfunctional manner. In such cases, inherent conflicts of interest, inefficiencies, duplications of efforts, and costs are increasingly have become increasingly apparent. So in other words, relevance, the relevance and effectiveness of a quality infrastructure system depends highly on whether supply of quality infrastructure services match the demand. To this end, many governments are considering the overall arrangement and associated interaction of the national quality infrastructure-related organizations as they seek to create a more integrated, fit for purpose and efficient user-friendly system. So a quality-based approach has gradually evolved with the aim of fulfilling this important set of needs. The proposed bills, therefore, rightly identify the need for a coordinated approach to the development of the national quality infrastructure to the quality policy. So establishing this appropriate quality policy to guide the quality infrastructure system can help to holistically address the quality and standards related issues that are integral part of the triple bottom line of sustainable development of people, planet, and prosperity. Uh, Jess, the next slide, please. So UNIDO stands ready to support the government of the Philippines in, development, in the development and implementation of the national quality policy and to provide technical assistance in development of the Philippines national quality infrastructure system. So I will not go through the approach to quality infrastructure in the interest of time. We will present these materials and provide a copy to the committee for the committee's reference. If I may go to the next um slide just to present to you what has been accomplished over the past 40 years as UNIDO being the largest multilateral player and that we have been supporting partner countries to increase their competitiveness to quality and compliance with standards. There are more than 500 experts and technical advisors who form a unique multidisciplinary team to support strategic and sustainable development. So consistently chosen as the main implementing agency of the UN by many developing partners. The organization is continuously acknowledged by its stakeholders as a center of excellence. 
So there's a quality policy trilogy. Again, in the interest of time, we will not, I will not expound on this. And please allow us to send you more details on this um, for your reference and for the benefit of our audience and public. Um, allow me to share with you the experience of UNIDO on quality policy. UNIDO has supported the development of 27 national and three regional quality policies. Based on this extensive global experience, UNIDO, in collaboration with, in, with its technical partners of the International Qual Network on Quality Infrastructure, has developed a set of guiding documents for quality policy development. <clears throat> Next slide. Uh, Jess, so just very, very as an overview, there are programs on a global basis on quality and standards that encompasses and this presents to you the various uh, stakeholders that we have worked with and across the value chain on the regional as well as the continental programming. Next slide, please. In the Philippine setting. In the Philippine setting. To support the government, UNIDO is implementing together with the Department of Trade and Industry the Global Quality and Standards Program, or GQSP. It's a special measure project. It represents an innovative approach developed by the UNIDO and Switzerland to the State Secretariat for Economic Affairs to strengthen the quality and standards compliance capacity to facilitate market access for, SMS, for, M, for SMEs. The GQSP Philippines has three major outcome components, the National Quality Infrastructure, and QI to be strengthened. And this is our key interest in the support for this particular bill, uh, Mr. Chair. The value chain compliance capacity enhanced and the culture for quality improved. So a component of the project is to facilitate the development of a national laboratory policy for the Philippines that will take into consideration the short, medium, and long-term testing needs of the country as a policy intervention which will have an impact on the industry and facilitate exports from the Philippines in the years to come. Next slide, please. So on this proposed bill, our reflections are that these are highly in line with UNIDO's lessons for more than 40 years of experience in supporting development of national quality infrastructure systems globally. It creates the framework for development of the, of the quality uh, program as the umbrella framework for guiding and development of the Philippines QIS. The proposed act covers various aspects of the NQIS. This is the vision, the objective, stakeholders, scope, pros, and responsibilities. In other words, it's pretty comprehensive and it's in line with the national development properties, priorities. So it also, we also foresee the establishment of the Philippine National Quality Infrastructure Coordination Council and defines its functions. So to reiterate, UNIDO extends its full support for the proposed bill for the development and implementation of the national quality policy, and we stand ready to provide technical assistance in the development of the Philippines' national quality infrastructure systems. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the opportunity, and a good afternoon to everyone. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for that presentation. Uh, kasi infrastructure to, no? So we'll, we need to invite the infrastructure agencies of the government for their comments, DPWH. DOTR, maybe BCDA, uh, and whoever uh, is involved in some way in infrastructure. So, any other comments? Wala na siguro, tatlong oras na ho tayo dito. Paka, wala na siguro mag gusto magstay pa dito. No? So, thank you very much uh, sa staff natin. Maraming salamat sa Senate Staff Secretariat and to our distinguished guests. Thank you very much. Uh, have a nice day po. Salamat po. Thank you, sir.